Okay, guys. So we are going to, we are going live in like a couple of seconds. Um, if you're not on, if you're not speaking, you just put up your mic, and then we just take, we just keep taking turns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, good afternoon, guys. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Let's let's talk film. And as usual, we are here again with another lovely bunch of talented and professionals in their own accord. Um, they were looking at something, something not so different, but something that needs to be um, uh, really spoken about and addressed. And we are talking about the African African storytelling, the role of the screen writer. Uh, we're trying to look at how the screenwriter can play his or her role in reshaping the narrative that we we all grew up to know. That is uh, basically Africa has mostly been seen through the lenses, has been filtered through the lenses of uh, crime, war. Uh, age, sickness, farming, you know, you can mention it, the list goes on. And the question is, is that Africa? Is that our story? Is that what we, we as a people stand for? And is that what we are? And that is what we're gonna be talking about with this fantastic screen uh, writers here. I'm gonna just take turns and then everyone is gonna just introduce themselves and then we'll just jump into the line of questions as possible. So, um, Anthony, I think I'll start with you. Yeah, yeah, Osavo. Yes, Ms. Osavo. Yeah, okay, see, how's it going? Please, can you tell us about yourself? Uh, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for yeah. joining us. It's my pleasure. Okay, so my name is Osavo Anthony. Uh, I'm a Ghanaian journalist. I've been doing, you know, I've writing for the past 15 years. I work with a number of you know, magazines, entertainment websites, and also a storyteller. Now, I choose to say a storyteller first because the screenwriting is something that, for me, is a skill. Uh, you can acquire it, but then yet you are not a storyteller. So I choose to call myself a storyteller first before I call myself a screen. Writer. The screenwriter to me is just uh, a professional, is a professional we all belong to. So you just have to use the professional jargon. So it's a screenwriter. But then I am a storyteller. A yeah. storyteller. Yeah. A great one. A great one. A great one as that. Uh, you know, you, uh, I think back to back for like a month, uh, two, three months now, your screen, um, uh, your story, your horror film has been winning several nominations and, uh, and then I watched as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, since last year, uh, up to date, I've been winning a number of, you know, Hollywood contests. Uh, Los Angeles, Motion Picture Festival, Screenplay, uh, New York International Screen, uh, Screenwriting Contest, Hollywood Blood, Horror Festival, Certain horror.com festival, creepy tree. Uh, I mean, no more of them. I can, I can just go on and on and on. Yeah. There are some I won the grand know, jury right? prize. There are some I yeah. got to semi finals. There are some I got to finals. In that order. Yeah. Great. Great. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's, it's, you are making us proud and we are really proud of you. Um, yeah, most good. Let's go to. <laughs> let's move on to. Uh, Abba, our lovely friend and sister in the States. How are you doing? How's everything there? Oh, there's so much going on here. <laughs> yes, I'm Abba Arthur. I am coming to you guys from the United States, Atlanta, Georgia. I also call myself a storyteller. Thank you for saying that. I think that's a beautiful description. I'm an actress as well. So the storytelling, I think, has always been a part of my life, but it became 
a professional endeavor when I realized that lack of roles for myself and anybody who looks like me. Also, as a Ghanaian American, I wasn't getting very many opportunities to be able to talk about my own story and obviously our culture. And so I learned the craft of screenwriting. I'm very proud to say I wrote and produced and directed my first film in 2018. So in 2019, The Womb is what it's titled. We traveled the film festival circuit, did really well. I'm very proud of what the film is doing. Um, we took a little bit of a pause because of the global health pandemic that's going on right now. But um, I'm hoping to make it available on streaming platforms very soon here. So I'm really happy to join you guys today. I always want to talk about movies. So here we are. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abba. Um, yes, yeah, so we move on to Stella. Stella, tell us about, about, about yourself. Who is Stella? And uh, you have some quite great credentials. So the thing is, when I wanted to do the show, I asked around and, and then the question was, um, I need a, a quite accomplished screenwriter, female screenwriter in Ghana um, to talk to. And everybody kept mentioning Abba, Abba, uh, sorry, Stella, Stella, Stella. Abba is big. <laughs> Stella, 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 Stella. I had about four people mentioning Stella. And I'm like, okay, what is about this Stella? So let me speak to her. So you tell us about, about yourself and, and what you've done so far, so Stella. Okay, so I was surprised when you told me you kept, um, you kept hearing my name. My name kept popping up because I don't really like to put my name on stuff when I write them. And um, I was in um, NAFTI. I did my screenwriting. I learned to like do screenwriting in NAFTI. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, can you hear you? Okay. But before that, I started writing um, scripts for adverts and other stuff. That was when I completed SHS. But then um, when I went to NAFTI, I think I started doing film when I went to NAFTI. It was mainly book. From the beginning, it was mainly book. But now, I think my daddy made me, like, push me into film. I am not a film type, but then my daddy put me into film, writing scripts for movies. And then my, I think um, about three or four years ago, I did my um, short film, which, which was um, about um, giving people a chance to speak. It was against mob justice. I don't know why okay. I deleted that. I don't know why I deleted that um, film after doing it. I don't know why I deleted it, but then it gained recognition. Then I deleted it. I just didn't like it anymore. Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh, I have other short films that I hope to like. I wanted to film before the end of this year, but then now things are a bit shaky. So, and I've also done um, some projects with Peter Sedifia, um, this Master and Three Mates, this is in two of it. And I also worked with other film. Because, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I can see. <laughs> Great. For yourself as a, as a student writer, it's, it's amazing the kind of works that you've done. And working, working with Peter, I know how uh, critical it is. And so I think you have a great potential and uh, you are on, on to something amazing. Yeah, okay, to the big man. Big man. Uh, Salazi. You want to quickly introduce yourself? Um, I'm Salazi. Yeah, um, I'm a passionate filmmaker. Always had. Yeah. I, just, all, I just, all I remember wanting to do from childhood is to make films. I just love it. Oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't hear Salazi. Salazi, you have to bring your mic up a little. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Okay, so um, I'm a screenwriter. Um, Salazi, I'm a screenwriter. Um, since childhood, 
all I can remember ever wanting to do was to make films. We had a cinema growing up, so I think that's where the passion came from. And I'm always wanting to like do something for people to also come and watch. Like I'm always watching these movies and I'm like, okay. And then I got to know they were written by someone. So I started learning on my own. So I think I'm a self-taught writer. I didn't really go have any formal education or writing. So yeah, that's my, and then, um, so <laughs> that's the basic. Yeah, your, your, your name is Yao. Are you, are you in any way related to Yao Jeka? No, no, it's Yao, Thursday born Yao. Eh? <laughs> Great. You guys are look at. Oh, I, I can't hear. Yeah, 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 it's fine. Okay. Salazi, Salazi, thank you very much. Um, if you can adjust your audio, that would be very great for the conversation. Okay. Um, Joe, um, tell us about yourself quickly. You, you are an amazing writer that I know. So I would want you to tell us some of the amazing things that you've done. Mm. What's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Please. I don't yes. know, like Same. there's this if, there's this breakage. Yeah. Please, if you're not talking, kindly turn off your mic so that if, if you're not speaking, just turn off your mic. So you have to turn it down. Okay, so that's it. Okay, Joe, you're good. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Hi, what's up everybody? Yeah. Hi. Okay, so my name is Joako. I'm a, I'm a writer and a filmmaker. And then for me, um, writing came to me first. Writing came to me first before I decided to even do film. And I remember vividly what I wanted to do. I just wanted to be a playwright. I wanted to be, a, I just want to be able to write and then have people on stage at my script out. But I figured out later on, we didn't really have a, a, a theater culture. There, there wasn't a strong theater culture in Ghana. In the same way, there wasn't really a strong um, film industry as well. I mean, if you are not going to drag me for this, we both know that we all know there isn't like a really strong film industry in Ghana. But then I was, I, I was willing, I was willing mm. to try out film. I was willing to try out film that I see myself eventually going back to sit, going back to theater very soon. I mean, it was my biggest plan for this year before we all got stuck at home. Like my plan this year was to do theater. We just leave film for a while. So for me, storytelling has been something that has been with me for a very, very long time. And um, I remember, I remember my first film. No one really saw my first film. I shot it, edited it, and then deleted it. Like I, it went for a few festivals. Like I did, I did, I did a few festival runs and then I, I deleted it. I just woke up one day. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't want to see this again. I deleted it. But then it really hurt me that I had to delete that film because I needed it to see progress. I needed that film to see like how far I have really come. And then for me, I like, I like to, um, I like to be very particular about the subjects I address in my films because um, I'm very particular about starting conversations with whatever I do. So um, my first film, um, one, one film that I'm so I'm so proud of was Lucky. I did I did Lucky um, at a point where I couldn't see people like me on screen. Even here in Ghana, I did realize all our casting agency does is okay. Where are the beautiful people? We put beautiful people on on, on the screen. We go on Instagram, whoever has a lot of followers to be able to sell tickets for your cinema time, you put them on screen. So it got to a time I wasn't, I wasn't, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so it got to a time I wasn't, I wasn't seeing people like me on screen. I wasn't seeing. A few of the clients I pitched for. So more people coming. So then again, it wasn't a very difficult session. So when you wrote as a. Hey, hey, Emmanuel, kindly please. Can I go on? Yes, kindly, kindly, kindly go on. Okay, so it got to a time I wasn't seeing people who look like me on screen. I wasn't seeing dreadlock people on screen. Every time I watch films, the dreadlock guys I saw were either tags or were either armed robbers or were either um, social misfits. And then I sit back and I look at myself, I'm like, I'm a gentleman with dreadlocks. I wake up in the morning and go to work like everyone else. I sit in spaces with like everyone else. So I don't feel like, okay, why should you discriminate someone based on how they keep their hair? So it really prompted me into writing Lucky, which I actually, it actually did well. It actually, I was really happy about the reception for Lucky. And I remember sitting in the cinema watching Black Panther. 
And I'm like, okay, so every single person here watching Black Panther are people who go online, people who come on Twitter, people who come on Facebook, people who go on Instagram and go like, they are not watching Ghanaian films. They are not watching African films in the mm-hmm. cinema. And I thought, okay, we really have a cinema culture here, but we just don't have the right movie for them. So I promised myself, I'm going to make a film. I'm going to write a film that will get all these people into the cinema. And that was what I did. I wrote a film that got all of them into the cinema. I wrote a film that for once, for, for once, it wasn't really projecting um, Accra. It wasn't really projecting Accra in ways that, ways that like the Western media will project Accra. I feel like, okay, we, we have young men in Accra who are happy. We have young men in Accra who are in school. We have young men in Accra who are trying to find love. We have young men in Accra who are actually trying to bond with their families and everything. So for me, it was, I wanted to write a film and I wanted to see people who look like me on screen, on the bigger screen. And that was what I really went in for. And then on to Boys Know the Cry. Boys Know the Cry was a short film I, I, I wrote at a point where it felt like men were not really allowed to be, to be outspoken about their emotions. Men were not really allowed to be, to be um, emotionally, it looks like um, emo- being emotionally responsible or being emotionally, Uh, um, people don't attribute to African men or people don't attribute to Ghanaian men and I feel like it's about time men it's about time men speak up about how they feel and, 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 and everything that is bothering them with regards to mental health so those were the kind of films and those are the kind of stories I really wanted to tell and I was really happy about the reception I really got for them so as a filmmaker I really like to start conversations as well without losing myself as a storyteller does it great sorry it's amazing. I saw I saw both Lucky and I saw uh, Boys Under the Cry too as well. Fantastic writing, artistically delivered. Great. So guys, uh, um, without further discussions, let's just jump into the topic for the day. But then let me introduce my uh, Naj. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you hear me, Crazy? Yes, you are great now. Awesome. I had. I like the hijab. <laughs> Oh, I see that then. Mm. The Hi, amazing exactly. hijab. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome the co-host for today, Naj, Najilav. Najilav, just tell us about yourself and um, we'll just jump into the discussion. Yeah, my name is Najla. You can all call me like Naj, but that's basically my social name. But my name is Najla, quite a long name, Ata Abdul Karim Najla Dramundu. I'm a filmmaker. Um, I like to call myself a filmmaker. I, I'm a trained animator, but then I do direct and I do write scripts and I do do all those things that we do to um, survive as filmmakers in Ghana. And um, just a film enthusiast and I'm looking forward to um, joining the movement that is going on and reshaping the African Ghanaian film industry and the African cinema in general. Yeah. Great. Um, Najilav is, is co-hosting with, with me today. So she'll be asking some of the questions and then, you know, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be going back and forth and, and talking and having the discussion. So let's quickly jump into uh, the first question for the day. Now, um, I was, this week, I, I, I came across something, uh, an African proverb. It says that until the lion learns to write, every story will favor or will glorify the hunter, right? I, I was like, okay, until the lion learns to write, every story will glorify the hunter. Has the story glorified Africa? Has it always been like this? And the key question, does Africa have a story? And what is the African story? What is the African story? Because all that we're going to be talking about is about the, the African story. So, Abba, let me take it, take it up um, from you first. Try and get your perspective, you in the diaspora. When you hear the word African story, what comes to mind and what really do you think we are talking about? So, you saying it is very different than when I hear it here in the States. When I hear it here in the States, my automatic, my automatic knee-jerk reaction is to ask, where are you talking about specifically? Because as we know, Africa tends to be clumped all together and we all know how different we are throughout the continent. So 
So my first question, usually whenever I hear somebody talk about an African story is let's talk about specifically where you're talking about. Um, in the context of this conversation, however, I, absolutely, absolutely there's an African story. I love that proverb, by the way, I'm gonna write that down. I love it, mm -hmm. but it's true. I mean, we do have a story and it's, it's important to share it. I think that there's so many different, it's, it's so multifaceted as you know, we've already pointed out already so far. And I think it's important that we tell the story, absolutely. Great. Um, let me go to um, Mr. Osafo. Now, when we hear, when when you are a Ghanaian, a writer, a horror, like you, you, you really master in the horror genre. When you hear the African story, what comes to mind? What is your per perception about that? Yeah, Chrissy. I think when I hear this uh, African story. For me, what comes to mind is any narrative that is told with the voice, with a perspective, and with the culture of Africa. Any narrative told with a voice, with a perspective, and with the culture of Africa. So therefore, it can be any kind of narrative, be it a play or drama, be a screenplay for motion picture, be it a novel, be it a, a short story, be it a historical piece, be it a fictional, whatever. Any narrative that has got three things, the African voice, the African perspective, and the African culture. And so with that understanding, mm. An African story to me is not only one that is told by an African or someone who's living in Africa. So even if somebody is, a, even if a white in US decides to tell a narrative that has got the African perspective, the African voice with the African culture, he or she is telling an African story. Great. Um, there was a question where my lecturer asked. I think when I go around, I would ask that question. Um, Stella, let me take your, your, your view on that as well. The African story. Um, to me, I believe everyone has a story. Every individual has a story. It doesn't have to be an African story or anything, but anyone, anyone can tell a story because everyone goes through something. So like limiting it to being an African story is like, I think a bit narrow because if someone who lives in Africa is telling the story, by all means, it will be an African story. But then everyone has a story to tell, irrespective of where it comes from. It could be from outside Africa and there will still be an African story because it's an African telling it from their perspective. So I think everyone, everyone has a story to tell. And yeah, Africa. Okay. 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 Uh, can I fill yes, her in over here? Yes, you get you you, you, you can get your turn to read, but <laughs> let me just oh, go oh, on the table and come out. Oh, I just fill it in, yeah. <laughs> Stella, please, please, please learn. For me. Like, um, when you get a chance to tell a story, you have to tell a world. In my opinion, like you have to tell a world because there are many African stories that are not being told well because we don't research or anything. So, but but do you but do you what I'm so what I'm asking is that yes, everybody indeed has a story. Yeah, and that is not to change the fact. However, Africa as a continent, as a people, do have a unique story. Yeah, we do have and lots of stories, lots. Yes, a yes, and, it, like, and like, as, as Osapo said, sometimes it comes in those three elements, the culture, the voice, and then the last one was the one said. The perspective. The, the perspective, perspective. Yeah. yes. And so that is what we are trying to address and see what what um, what you think about it, but 
like you, you rightly said, everyone has a perspective and we're just trying to look at the story from the African perspective. Joe, do you have a different, do you have a different opinion about this topic, African perspective, the, 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 the African storytelling, the African story? I, I feel like over the years, like um, when people say the African story, it really does lump Africa together as a country. And then I find myself in a space where I want us to move from, from I want us to move from that narrative. Once someone says the African story, what is the African story? And I feel we are the people that are going to change what African story means to us. You get what I'm saying? So if yeah. we, if, 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 if every single chance we get, if we want to project ourselves as the African story, it does, it, it fits into the stereotypes to the Western space that Africa is a country or Africa is just a space. I feel that they can't really be the African story they can't really be a single umbrella for the African story, but they could be subsets of what an African story is to us as a people. And I feel like African story is just any story that truly reflects and represents us as a people without um, taking away anything or adding anything just to make it better or just to make it acceptable to the people we look up to, in this case, Hollywood, in this case, the West. The African story is like our truth, we telling our truth in our own voice, in our own perspective, without fear or favor or without fear of not it's not being okay or it not being like accepted by the people outside. So just being true to our own voice and just being true to our own perspective and not forgetting our culture like did mention early on. So I just for our story is a representation of us, which like what we mirror to the Western world and what we mirror to them for them to see as us. And as much as we are entirely buried in trying to tell people what the African story is, we should as well learn to also tell people that Africa is not a country. And then Africa can have a story, but then it shouldn't always necessarily be the African story that they are actually waiting for. And we shouldn't really beat ourselves up trying to get something that fits into the African story. First of all, Africa is not a country. That's what I think. <laughs> Africa is not a country. That is a whole debate on its own. That is a big debate on its own. Anyways, um, Talazi, yeah. let me pick your two cents on this. Well, I think I agree with everyone. Like, just like everyone is saying, the African story is like um, when you look at the West, they always if they talk about Africa. We are uh, a continent with different cultures, different people. In terms of skin color, like there's a lot, there's a whole lot about Africa. So we want to tell the African story. We just don't take it from one way. Like this is Africa. There are we, we are a lot. There's a whole lot. There's yeah. So I think I agree with what everyone is saying about the, there's diversity. Basically, it has to be a story that talks about our whole time. Yeah. Okay. So um, Maji. Yeah. Yeah. The African, you, you remember, I, I think you, you remember this topic, the, the, the African story versus the Africa story. Yes. I don't know what I'm getting it right. The, yes. the, Africa's, the African story and the, Afri and the and Af Africa African story. African story, yeah. Is there, where lies the confusion? And, and, and when we say all of this stuff, Africa, Africa is what's the your continent. Own, own story, own? Yeah, Africa is a continent, and an African is someone who is oh, a continent. Can you hear me? My name is breaking badly. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I think the last. You need to fix. You need to fix your um the cord. The cord to your earpiece. It's breaking. Me. Salazi, yeah, I think. I think. I, know, I, think, I think one of you. Salazi. Yeah, because yeah, I have been using my. I don't get this breaking. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We are so that's that's fine. To, sorry, I have a very bad network today. I've moved from my normal space. Um, so Africa is actually the continent and an African is the story. Abba is not in Ghana right now. So, but she's, she can tell African stories. She's an African. So whatever story she tells this is the African story. But Africa's story is story about the continent, Africa. And this particular issue, the Africa, African story, African story. I've been having this debate since um, first year in um, film school, and we are still here. We haven't clearly defined it. Why don't we look at, look at, look at it like this? Um, we have the Western story. We have the cowboy stories. We have the European story. They have this um, 
elements that make up that kind of story. So whenever you see those type of elements, you're able to identify those stories. We need to give Africa or African stories that kind of brand, which is something that is easily relatable and recognizable. Then we can have an Africa story or African stories. So, I mean, that leads me to um, a question I want to ask uh, everyone. The second question that is, if you look at the way our great filmmakers from the past, that is Osman Simbeni, um, there are a lot of film, great filmmakers. And then the filmmaker for my favorite film, that is the uh, Hyenas. Um, if you look at the way these people tell their stories and they were great, this, this film traveled the world. If you look at the way they were telling their stories, is it the basis for African stories? Can that be like the basis for retelling like that African? Cause those films were really like appreciated. They were celebrated and we still celebrate these films that have been made several years ago by Africans. The um, Kwawan says, um, Kwesi, remind me of this. This, I was just talking about this film yesterday. Heritage Africa. Yeah, I told you so. Heritage, Heritage Africa. Africa. The, the, I told you so, yes. The, the very famous one. Love Brewed in an African Port. That's my favorite one. I've forgotten the title. If you look at this particular films, the style, the, the elements that goes into these films, should it be the basis of an African story? Or what is your general view on African storytelling in this modern era. So that's my question to you guys. What is our, um, your general view on this, um, on African storytelling in this modern era? Yeah. Okay, so I think who will go first? Who will go first on that? Abba, you wanna go first? Sure. Yes, love brood in the African, oh my goodness. I sat down and studied that film, studied everything about it. Oh, I watched it over and over and over again. I believe that it is a excellent foundation. And I think that that film can simply be updated with two or three tweaks and still be applicable today. I think it's brilliant. As somebody who likes to tell the story of um, emotional interaction and relationships, that is what I base a lot of my writing off of. And so I believe that, yes, when you look at the character interaction, when you look at dialogue, when you look at story development, when you look at the arcs, you know, it's, it, it comes together so beautifully that when you do have a blueprint that works, I think that can still apply today. Thank you, thank you, um, uh, Abba. Crazy muted me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was on muting you. So, Salati, can we hear from you? So, I thought those films were brilliant for that era. But for this modern era, we have to tell stories that depict what goes on now. Because if you want to say the African stories, looking at those films, that was that era. That was how things were then. That was how they dressed then. That was how they spoke then. But we are living in a era where we don't speak like that anymore. We don't dress like that anymore. So if you want to tell an African story, we can't look at it from that perspective. I think that's what I'm saying. Oh, so last your sound is, is, is really from where we yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's very breaking. It's very, very breaking. Yeah, if you can find somewhere and just sit, if you can just find somewhere and, and sit comfortably, at least for the next 20 minutes, that would be very good. Okay, hold on. Okay. Joe, Joe, I think, uh, Joe, let's, let's hear you on, 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 on next. What color you find some place? Yeah, I feel like um, whilst um, going back to all those great films, Heritage Africa, Love, Buddha, and African Pots, all those films were really amazing films and like they were superb films for their time. But moving in today, moving here into our time, it's 2020, and we need to make films that really reflect the time, of course, except 
or unless you really want to make a period piece. And one thing I've really realized is when people talk about the African story, they are expecting to see um, drumming and dancing. They are expecting to see, of, we, know, we know before the era of filmmaking, we as a people had a story. We as a people told stories through either um, folk tales or folklores where you sit around with your uncles, your extended family, your grandfathers, they tell you a story just before like everyone goes to bed. That was a, a form of storytelling for us as a people. And then it progressed to um, theater and then it got to okay, cinema came in and everything. But I feel like with, with the passage of time, we need to accept the fact that Africa is also developing. So I don't expect to see an African story today or a film about Africa today that um, people really want to see um, people um, wrapped uh, kente up here, kente down here, and walking barefooted. I'm not discrediting the I'm not discrediting the fact that some people in Africa live that way. But then I don't really expect that to be the standard of African storytelling. Because today, if you come to here in Africa, we have women who are lawyers, we have women who are doctors, and then their stories are valid. It doesn't actually, the fact that an African story doesn't mean I need to see a woman who is pregnant with two babies on the back with a, with an, in an abusive home and then trying to keep the home together, that makes her an African. It doesn't really make her an African. It just, it, it just makes her what, it just makes us feed it into the stereotypes of what the people in the West really want to see. That's why when I see people and people go like, okay, for your film to go international or for your film to go out there, you need to do this, you need to do that. Nah, man, don't tell me that. I'm not about to do this. I'm about to tell my experience. My experience is I wake up every morning, I go to work. Everyone in my workspace is educated. Everyone like most people that go home to all the women have voices and everything for me it is the african story african story doesn't really mean when people do this things they make it seem like oh you are appropriating um, western culture i don't think it's a matter of appropriating western culture i just feel like africa has moved africa as a country is moving with the world every day and then the african story shouldn't really be um it shouldn't be exaggerated pains or exaggerated suffering or exaggerated um anger or like the angry black man or the, the barren woman who goes to church to look for um, to look for prayers or look for solutions for the home people actually in ghana now people really when people cannot really make children people in ghana are opening up to the fact or opening up to the idea of adopting people in ghana are opening up to the idea of 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 of, sur of surrogates and everything like we as a people are growing we are developing so i feel yeah. to really want to see that as an african story it doesn't really sit well with me when people say oh okay today today the african story or the african culture is a young man who sits in trotro and goes to work is a young man who saves up enough to take a girl on a date that is the story it is the young woman who actually thinks she needs to find her own voice as a feminist it is the young man who feels like oh okay i'm 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 open. I'm open to explore who I am. Is is gender identity, is sexual crisis, and sexual identity. It is religion. All these things come together to form the African story. I think we are far gone beyond the ages of heritage Africa. We are far gone beyond the ages of um, of of um, love brooding and African ports. Yeah, those were beautiful, fantastic stories. But then moving on, one, one fantastic film I always make reference to is the burial of Kujo. See how amazing that film was. And that film was so perfect that I felt like in the olden days, if our forefathers had cameras, that was the film we were going to make because it had elements of music, elements of color, elements of story, migration and everything. So the African story is developing every day. It is growing every day. It is catching up with time. The African story is now. It is really current. And now is the time to tell those African stories. Yeah, I think so. Great. Okay, um, uh, Joe, so you just, right now, you, you, you're saying that um, the experiences of the films, uh, the experiences the films in the olden days, uh, the older films captured is different from the experiences we are capturing today. I mean, we are, the things we are experiencing today and we should capture. And that is very true. But then, um, that, so now you are talking, when we are talking about the experiences of the people that are living in Africa, I think then that's the African story. So now we've gotten to a point where like, we can really like know what an African story is. That is the experiences of the African, um, the people in Africa, the Africans, and that is the African story. Also, um, like what Abba mentioned, Abba, Abba really like made a very um, beautiful comment. I would like to, um, I would, I would like Joe to say this, um, to respond to this. Abba says she, she, she has studied love building African poets. She loves it. And then she drives some elements from it 
to serve as inspiration for the for her works. And this is this is very beautiful. When you look at when you're writing, I think I believe when you are writing, you have the subject, which are the experiences, and then you you have the way you treat it. When Amma was speaking, she really emphasized on the way um, Kwawanse's film was treated, the interactions, how the writing style. When we are talking about storytelling, I think we're talking about the style in which you tell the story because every day we tell stories. So can't we, can't we emulate or drive inspiration from the writing style or the, the, the style of filmmaking that older people um, developed and then match that with our experiences to create that unique identity that we seek? Because it's just the style, the style of storytelling is different from the subject that we are discussing. Can't we drive in for, um, inspiration from them to uh, inspire I our feel, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing or discrediting the fact that these are amazing films. These were films we all grew up on. These were films that really made us want to be filmmakers. These were films we all watched. But then looking at time and looking at space, time and space has really changed. And then what really might be relevant to them then might not necessarily be relevant to us now. Even though a lot hasn't really changed, a lot has not changed about our needs. A lot has not changed about our wants. And I say this because if you go to school today, if you go to uh, if you go to school today, when my parents were in school, in social studies, some of the problems were lack of lack of potable, like lack of potable water, um, bad roads, uh, um, teenage. My time studies, it was lack of infrastructure, lack of uh, bad roads, lack of potable water, teenage pregnancy, broken homes. My nephew is in school right now, and we are still solving those same problems. So over the years, all these problems have not really changed. All these problems have not changed, but our approach to them might eventually change over all the, like all these last, last 50 years. The problems haven't changed, but then approach to them might have changed. So the way that we actually might, let, let's take styling. Let's, let's take styling in um, Kwanzaa's um, Heritage Africa. It, if anyone really wants to tell a political story right now, right, with the Heritage Africa story, we will be able to run with that same story, but styling will be different. We will be able to run with that story, but dialogues will be different. We will be able to run with that story. It doesn't take away from the fact that we are telling a political story. We are telling a love story. What love meant then hasn't changed, but then how love is expressed now has changed. So I feel like as a people, we need to go back then. The past is always the basis for the future. We are not rubbishing or train away the past to, 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 to look into our future. We always have to go with it, but then the approach has to change. Otherwise, we'll just be in circles, doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it was beautiful storytelling, but then if, if it is told today, would it still be told in that same way? Would it be told in 2020 Africa that same way that it was told in the 90s Africa? That's basically what I'm trying to say. It's a last series. Great. Uh, I, I think I, I think Stella Stella has something to say. Yeah. Um. Based on what um Joe was saying, I agree with him. Everything he said. You see, uh, just in a different way. So maybe something happened to your mom. Um. In maybe 19 something. Maybe the same thing is happening to you now, but in a different way. Let's look at the African story. When, the, when people talk about Africa, they think of slavery. So they start with the story of slavery and everybody's doing slavery, slavery like everywhere. But then when you think about it, has slavery really stopped? You see, um, people talk about um, times where um, fellow Africans sold other Africans into slavery. And then when you think about it, when you sit down and think about it, it's still happening. People take money from um, other people and then they, they, put, they put up signs, work in Jordan, work in this, work in that. And you would think it's something else. Sometimes you go and then it's not really what you were thinking it was supposed to be. So maybe the story has changed. The story has changed, but then it's still the same story. So you are telling the same story in a different way. So you're not saying that when you're talking about an African story, it's supposed to be about maybe um, people wearing, cloth and drumming and stuff. That's not the African story. It could be this thing, this, but then in a different way. It could be about slavery, but then 
and in a very different way because people are sold, people are taken to other countries to do other stuff they didn't sign up for. They didn't even know they were going to be in that kind of trouble or that kind of problem. They were thinking maybe they were going to work or they were going to do something else. And then they go and then it's something different altogether. Some even go and then die. But then we say slavery has stopped. So then um, there are stories. The past is gone, but then the past so repeats itself in a, in a modern way. So then you can still tell the African story and it will be in a modern way. But then you are trying to address something um, someone else addressed in the film a long time ago. So then the, the, um, maybe the person telling the story has changed. The things have changed now. There are roads, there are cars, there, there are um, planes. But then it's still the same African story you are telling. But then in a modern way, you don't have to feed into maybe stereotypes that Africans still live in huts, Africans still live in this. But I'm still telling the African story. I don't know if you get me. I, I don't know if anyone gets get Yeah, Mr. 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 Safo is, is just listening to everything. He's just talking everything. Because <laughs> 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 so, it's my time. Yeah, 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 I think so. Or not. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, so I think we still have, or we still can talk about what we call the African story. There is the African story. There are stories you can look at them and then say, hey, this is an American story. There are stories you can look at them and say, hey, this is a German story. So yes, there is an African story. Now, what uh, I think my other guy was slightly not getting well is that, you see, when we say the African story, especially in this age that we find ourselves, we are not saying that tell a story whereby we wouldn't see characters wearing suit and tie. We are not saying tell a story whereby we wouldn't see computers, uh, characters using you know, phones and all of that. No, I don't think that is what uh, people mean when they say the African story. But then like I said earlier, the African story is just a narrative that has got the African perspective, the African culture, and then the African voice, okay? So let's take uh, the movie that uh, Abba brought up, uh, Love Breed in the African Story. Now, this is a story about a young girl okay. that her parents think that she is of age to marry. But then as Africans, it is your parents who choose who you marry. So therefore, they want her to marry a rich lawyer but if she also wants to marry her, her, a poor guy, you know, that she feels that, yes, this is a man that truly in my heart, I really love. I don't love this uh, lawyer that you guys want me to marry, okay? Now, when you bring that story in today's world and you show it to anyone, the person will be like, what? Parent forcing their daughter to marry, I mean, how? Who does that in this 21st century? Who does that? It, it will not happen. So therefore, if you pick the script of love brood in an African port, and you want to shoot that same script in today's world, and we say tell it in the African way, what you are going to do is that you are going to tell a noble family who have a daughter, they want her to marry someone, but then the daughter says, hey, this is not the man that I love. Then you then let the character, who is the female, perhaps the protagonist, you then let her educate her parent that, mom, please, those days are over. Today, somebody can be living in Germany and you see somebody in America, they fall in love. Somebody can be living in uh, Tamale, he sees somebody in Kumasi, they fall in love. So dad, mom, please. I mean, this orientation, it will not work. Now, you see that with the original movie, the parents are exercising what I call the African perspective. And the African perspective is that it is your parents who choose who you marry. But then bringing it in this 21st century, you highlight on it to tell somebody, because somebody will be like, ah, what is that? A parent force, and then you tell them that yes, in Africa. That is what we did, or that is what we used to do. 
That is the African perspective that I'm talking about. The African voice. You can still tell a story in this 21st century with the African voice. One of the things that you can use, for instance, with an African voice is that Africans talk with a lot of proverbs. Africans will talk with a lot of proverbs. So you see that, because see, before you were coming to interview us, you did what? <laughs> you said, let me give you guys this proverb. <laughs> Right. It is an African thing. How many white people will speak with proverbs in it? It's not their thing. But Africans, we are like that. It is in us. That is our voice. So therefore, I remember my first script, which I thought that is what I could use to penetrate Hollywood, and it didn't work. <laughs> Had those elements in it. I mean, a character talks more. He wants to talk in a proverbial way. Look, it got to a point. Those who gave me coverage. The person said, ah, do we have human beings who talk like this in this world? Somebody, a company that I pay for. You see, so it got a point, I saw that, look, this story, I have to share it. And maybe, I don't know if you may ask me why I got into horror writing, blah, blah, blah. I may share my experience with you trying to enter Hollywood with my African stories, okay? So yes, we have the African stories that we can tell. Now, I've talked about the perspective. I've talked about the voice. Now, somebody will ask, how do we tell that African story? You can tell it from so many different ways. For instance, when you take uh, something like uh, this Kwekwe Nancy story that we all know, Kwekwe Nancy in Tekuma, blah, blah, blah. This is an African story. One character who thinks he's so wise that he wants to tap all the wisdom from all human beings into a pot so that he can rule the world. This is an African story. You can pick that very quick one as a story and do a screenplay in it in today's world and show it as a motion picture. It is an African story. The story of Ya Santua, it is an African story. The story of Konfuanoti, it is an African story. Look, it was when I was started writing a story that an old man called me and then gave me a story of how there was a character, a giant character in Ghana. Once in Ghana, he was a giant. He said he's called Asebo Menfi or something. Asebo Menfi. And the kind of things he said about this man, oh, that, wow, this is a blockbuster movie. Who has bothered to you know, use this as a screenplay or to tell a movie? No one is doing it. So there's that, Afri we have the African story. We can tell it. It's not a matter of, you know, like my brother Riley also you know, noted that uh, they don't have to clap clothes around themselves, wear a honey mind. No, not necessarily. But those elements of African, this African that can still be in it. And then you just support it with how today's world is, is, you know, is going, okay? The story of uh, this movie, uh, Deadly Voyage. You remember when I was talking about Africans, I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be an African or a black person. It can even be a white somewhere in China, somewhere in India, somewhere in Germany. One of the story the fellow is telling is from the African perspective, the African culture, the African voice. It's an African story. And so the movie, Deadly Voyage, we all know that story, which is like the subject or the theme of the story, is an African thing. How many white people hide in ships so that they can be brought to Africa? Have we heard that story before? No. Then we have heard stories of Ghanaians, Nigerians, Cameroonians who hide in ships, whether they can be taken to Germany, they can be taken to Italy, they can be taken to Spain. So therefore, Delhi Boy story is an African story. When you tell it, you are telling the African story. Great, great. Um, I think a lot of things are coming up. A lot of things are coming up. And for example, okay, for example, let's say uh, even Lion King, as we all know, Lion King was basically an African story which was, was, was taken and then rewritten and, you know, giving all of those like it's a it's a it's it's, it's an actual story which was 
plays into this whole animation setting. And then you take a story like uh, Black Panther. Now, Black Panther sort of has an, is a story about Africa, African. Is Black Panther an African story? I feel Black Panther is, um, I think Black Panther is, is a multi-universe. It's, I wouldn't say Black Panther is an African story. We can't like lay claim on a, of an African story. If you have to go by the perspective, the voice and the cultural relevance of what, um, of what, uh, uh, yeah, of what Osafo, is it Osafo? Yeah, yeah. Osafo, Osafo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on what Osafo said, then we can't entirely make Black Panther an African film. You get it? Based on what he said, not disputing the fact that it does have African elements in there from costuming to styling to even dialogue at, any, at, at some points. The dialogues were, the dialogues actually brought us back to Africa. And it's not about Black Panther is that if you do an African film, if you close your eyes, you can't really put yourself into that space. What space were they talking about? Where is Wakanda? I feel like Wakanda is basically an amalgamation of Africa. It, it has a bit of Kenya in there, a bit of South Africa in there, a bit of Ghana in there, a bit of Nigeria in there. So it basically becomes an amalgamation of Africa, which I can't entirely lay claim of it as an African story if you are to go by the voice, if you are to go by the culture, and if you are to go by the perspective as well. That's what I think. Um, Abba. What what do you think? Is Black Panther an African story? Because you, you saw the number of Africans that embrace the story as BS. And you know, all that happened and the support we gave the story and everything. You see, I can't say it. Can you guys hear? I can hear. Mm -hmm. Can I say something before Abba talks? Go ahead. Oh, I mean, I felt like um, Black Panther, Black Panther for us as well was just an awakening for people in the diaspora to feel like, oh, okay, Black Panther made it become cool for people to say I'm African. Black Panther, it opened, it opened doors for Africans worldwide. People who actually haven't really been to Africa in a long time. Black Panther was a time where most people felt like, oh, okay, it's so cool to be an African right now. And then they wear their dashiki and then they tie their hair and then they wear these African prints, which actually is just an appropriation of real African prints, which has no history. Or when you trace it back, you can't trace the prints back to Africa. You can just trace them to um, to Sweden or something like that. So Black Panther was it opened, door, it opened doors for African cinema at a point. You might like to agree or disagree to this, but Black Panther did open doors for Africa and it made African in the diaspora feel okay. It feels cool to be Africa. Right after Black Panther, we had the Afrobeat craze. Right after the Afrobeat craze, there was the melanin craze, and then there was the Africa to the world craze. So, I mean, that's why I think Black Panther really did for us as a people of Africa, even though I wouldn't stand anywhere and say Black Panther is an African story. Yeah, that's what I think. I agree 100%. 100%. I'd like to call it, I call it the Black Panther effect that I think took place here, which is that before, if I'm, I have a television show that is based in Ghana, it's a Ghanaian story. And before Black Panther, they would skim through it, you know, in my writer's package and just kind of gloss over it. Now, <laughs> it's the first thing that they want to hear about. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, tell me about this. So I recognize and I appreciate the benefit of Black Panther. And at the same time, like you said, when I have a conversation in this space, what is Wakanda? It is a collection of everything. It's the same way um, Zamunda, when Coming to America came out. Then everybody wants to say, oh, are you from Zamunda? What is that? Like, what, Where is that? What the what hell? What do you mean Zamunda? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Now all of a sudden everybody wants to be African and talk about Zamunda because that's their only association to the continent. But what it's done and what I appreciate so much about Black Panther, aside from the opportunities it's given me as an actor and as a writer, is that it is it has renewed the interest of Africans all over the diaspora to go back home. That's what I really appreciate about Black Panther. And I think it the the applause that I want to give the film is in the interest and past the fake cloths that burn my eyes when I see people wearing, 
<laughs> past that, I appreciate the fact that now it opens up the door for me to be able to have conversations with people who have an interest in Wakanda. Oh, T'Challa this, T'Challa this. Okay, well, where, when are we going? When do you want to come with me? Let's go together and actually discover where, let's go to a real place <laughs> where there's real people and learn that story. So uh, when you first asked the question, I was like, is it? I think it is on the first layer. And then when you start peeling the layers, we get it gets a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more um, interesting. What's up? Who's talking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Black Panther to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, unlike my two colleagues, I mean, to me, it's an African story, okay? Yeah. That is told uh, with what we call science fiction, okay? So it is like an African story that has been situated in today's, uh, how shall I say, uh, science fiction, you know, technological world, so that people from Africa of African descent, as well as anybody at all in this world would be able to understand and relate to the movie. So Black Panther is an African story, okay? <laughs> Black Panther is an African story. And like I'm saying, it's not a matter of saying it with your mouth or just describe, you know, you're just saying, oh, it's an, no. It's about what are the elements in it? It is the element. It's the voice, it's the perspective, it's the culture. I believe you all know that in Black Panther, a character put a strip of kente around his neck. Do you all remember? Yeah. The whole point is in Black Panther, from exactly. every single every single frame in Black Panther had like it was, it was, it was costumed, it was styled like it was, it was styled like with Africa in mind. It doesn't necessarily make it an African story. And and if you have to look at the layer, if no, you have so to that's the perspective. Layer, right? That's the perspective. It's a story. It is an African story. story that is told but, 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 in such a way Africa? that no. any which person who. For instance, the Wakanda that they created. I mean, if you like go and ask the writer of the story, he will tell you that Wakanda is, is a fictional word I created. But then the question is, which question. fictional can word is it? Is it a fictional word in US? No. Is it a fictional word in Germany? No. It's a fictional word in Africa. It's not a fictional word in Africa too. Oh, can no. No, from no, the writer's perspective, what he said is that Wakanda is not a country that you can come to Africa and say, oh, I'm going to Wakanda. But then because he says it's an African story, he said, oh, let me create such a country to represent Africa because I'm telling an African story. So I'm um, talking about this because, movie. Um, so but you can't relate what, Wakanda to America. You can't from what you relate saying, Wakanda right? to any from, other place than from Africa. What you are saying, from Even what you Africa. are saying, Even coming Africa. to America, coming to America, Coming to America had coming to America had Kinte in there. Coming to America had uh, had fair in there. Coming to America had all those things in there. Do we then say because it had all these elements, does it make coming to America an African it's story? Really coming to America is it. an African story. Oh, okay, guys, okay. Guys, uh, it's clear. Coming it's clear to America, now. it's an African story. Guys, okay. So this kind of brings us to this point where we ask again. Our first, I mean, the first question: uh, What is the African story and what is Africa's story? Because uh -huh. once you define it and you understand it, then the, the, the premise the premise will help you to know what to say. You know? Yeah, I think Black Panther is not made by an African. It's not an African's experience, but it's about an African, a fictional African town. So it's a story exactly. about Africa. And uh, coming to America is also a story about Africa. Yes. And another I mean, the, uh, the, the, you see, the orientations even in coming to America should tell you that this is an African story. Okay? Hakim, he is in a kingdom. A kingdom where anytime he's walking, they put roses under his feet. Which American king or queen or empire, whatever, walks with flowers and roses being so let me um the, let me let me read this comment from Samuel. 
um, K.O. Achampon. He says, there has to be an intent to African storytelling. There should be an agenda to impact society. The significance of a story, regardless of the source or region, should be relevant to the times and chain of generation. I think this was also with the experiences Joe was talking about in our modern storytelling. This was his contribution. Um, Salasi, are you ready now to give us your view on modern um, storytelling? Okay, I think Salasi is still unstable. And that leads us to um, the next question. Um, I once, I once came across the, the saying that a story can be told by anyone. It is the person who is telling the story that, that matters. It's the person who is telling the story that matters. And this goes back to the point of the Lion King story Fred was saying. It's an African story that was taken by Hollywood and then it was infused with the elements of Hollywood exactly. to make it a Hollywood story. So mm -hmm. my next question is, what is the relevance of Africans telling the African? Can you please hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, what is the relevance of Africans telling African stories? Africans telling African stories. What is the relevance? Because we've had um, Hollywood take African stories and infused elements of Hollywood into them and made them Hollywood stories. So what is the relevance of Africans telling Africa stories? Um, Abba, can you please start? Of course. I have a good friend of mine who has a television show on the air right now about a Nigerian woman who lives in the United States who's fallen in love with a white man. It's called Bob Hart Abishola. And when I had the conversation with her before the show went on the air, she talked about how she noticed the shift when she showed up and she entered the writer's room because the truth is before she showed up, it was mostly white men. And I think a couple of white women that were involved in the um, storytelling. And so when she showed up, she was able to bring a level of authenticity that did not exist before. I think it goes back to the proverb that you blessed us with earlier about the lion telling their own story. I believe that in order to control the narrative, there is a level of responsibility that we as filmmakers, as storytellers have to be able to tell our own stories the way that we've experienced them and the way that we see them. As someone who is a first generation American, that story is also very unique. So I cannot be sitting in America letting somebody else tell what it feels like to be an African living overseas. No, that's my voice and that's my story to tell. So I feel very strong, very strongly about any African telling their own story, whatever it looks like, wherever they are, it is our responsibility to be able to shape the narrative for ourselves. I think we're the ones that lead the conversation and we're the ones that tell the rest of the world, this is what our experience is. Because for so long, other people have been creating stories, whether or not it is to control the minds of other people about the resources and the riches and the beauty that is the continent of Africa, or whether it's uh, for money or just for entertainment purposes. I think that it so easily can be twisted um, and polluted. And so if we are not telling our own stories, someone else is going to tell it for us and they're going to tell it wrong. So I feel very, very strongly about us telling our own stories. Awesome, um, Abba. Um, Joe, can we please hear from you? Joe. Hello. Yes. I mean, can we please hear from you? Oh. I would, I, would I, would like to, I would like to hear Abba's closing remark. The last words Abba said, I had to go get water. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, Abba, can you um, I, <laughs> yes. In summary, I was saying that 
if we don't tell our own stories, this, the narrative that they tell, they will control. They will pollute it. They will distort it. They will make it for their own entertainment, as we've seen so many times before. So I actually feel very strongly about whatever your personal experience is, whether it is uh, living in Accra, whether it's living in Germany or living in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States, whatever your experience is, it is your responsibility to tell because if not, somebody else is gonna tell our story and they're going to tell it wrong. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think that's very true because um, even, even in Africa or even amongst Africans ourselves, right? I've had a time where I've really met people who come back. I mean, um, Ghanaians or Africans in the diaspora, they come back here and then they feel like their voices or their stories are not authentic enough. And then I tell them, you know what, calm down and relax. Our, our experiences are different. I am African. How about you are Ghanaian, right? My experiences as a Ghanaian and your experiences as a Ghanaian is totally different. It doesn't, it doesn't discredit your experience. It doesn't make my experience better. It doesn't make me more Ghanaian. It doesn't make you less Ghanaian. But I just feel like as Africans, we need to have our voice, no matter, no matter which part of the world we find ourselves in. What being an African in Ghana means is totally different from what being an African in America means. So I feel like there is a need and it's very, very important for us to take our own voices and then run with, run with our own narratives. And then I feel like there isn't an entire and entirely or there isn't a specific yardstick to tell the African stories. African worldwide, African everywhere, Africans home have different perspectives to what being an African is. And that is why it is so necessary for us to tell our stories. You might be able to tell a story in the same way. We will tell the same story, but then all come will be translated differently because our experiences are not the same. Our experiences are entirely different. So I just feel it is very, very necessary for us to be able to run with our own narratives because if I here decide to tell an American story or an European story or an Asian story, I feel like, yeah, as a writer, sometimes we give ourselves so much credit and go like, yeah, you are a writer. You could explore, you could enter the world. It's fiction, go ahead and create. But what we actually do forget is in as much as it is fiction, it has to be culturally relevant. It has to be, there is culture as well and we shouldn't really run entirely far from them, except it is for mere entertainment and we see we see Hollywood do that as entertainment and then we as a people the only thing we actually do is we sit back and then we join the bandwagon online with the hashtag and go like okay let's go on the hashtag and go for what it is but then the whole point is yours. I could tell an American story right now, but it wouldn't be as superb as a Ghanaian living in America telling that story. So I just feel like whichever story we are telling, it's okay to find someone who is in that space to tell this very story. Otherwise, we'll just end up being a bunch of people who feel like we could have done it better. And the only way we'll reach the world is with our hashtags. And then we just sit all day doing that and just getting angry on social media. That's why I think that it is. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Even I love the getting angry on social media aspect because um, we need to foster this kind of type of conversation. Um, Stella, can we please hear from you? Okay, so about telling African story, I'm not very, very big on that because I believe if you're African, then when you're telling the story, it's going to be African. How about telling a story about maybe being a woman? It's still going to end up being African because you are writing it as a woman from Africa. And you see, sometimes you watch Hollywood movies and they are talking about maybe um, women empowerment or maybe the, 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 the theme of the story is maybe detective, something, maybe a drama or something. They are talking about something different. And it's still an American story. They didn't have to portray anything to make it American. They just told the story from how they see it. So I, I think you don't have to struggle to be African if you are African. Just tell the story. You don't have to prove that you're African in the story you're writing. You don't, you don't need to prove to anyone that you're African or anything. Just write your story and your perspective on what you are writing on. Yeah, it's going to be African in me as long as you are 
you are from Africa and you were born in Africa, or as long as no matter where you are, it's still going to be African because you are just African. You don't have to strive but, to be what you are. I don't okay, think, uh, but don't you think? Don't you think the experiences? Don't you think the experiences of an African woman is going to be entirely different from the experiences of an European woman or of an Asian woman? Or I mean, there would be an underlining underlining theme that will run across to for every woman worldwide. Especially, of course, talking about patriarchy, we know like the world is the world is very, very chauvinistic, and then the world will make for women to breathe. Like there will be these elements that cut across all these elements. But then don't you think even talking about women's stories, women everywhere, an African woman's voice will be different from an American woman's voice and an European woman's voice. So then that brings us back to the need to be able to tell an African story first of all, before then we actually drop it down to gender. Because Africa is broader, and then gender is just like a subsection of it as a like as the politics you get me okay um um let me let me let me read this comment from aram evans adoko it is relates to what you are talking about he says does african have a structure for telling their narratives does african have a structure for telling their narratives so if you have a structure then you can um, tell um, Stella that whatever story she's telling, she should fit this structure before it can be called an African story. Do you get it? So please, um, Joe, can you please take this one? Oh my God, I was hoping Asafu would take this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would, no, I would love you to take this because you were, because you were, you were speaking to um, Stella. Oh, okay. I, I feel, I feel, I, I think storytelling is storytelling everywhere. Um, it should have an opening, it should have a middle, it should have an end, but then in no particular order. I mean, story, storytelling is storytelling everywhere. There is no structure for African story. There is no structure for American story. Story is story everywhere. It is a universal language. So I don't think there is a structure or there should be a structure for it. That's what I think. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, can we please hear from your Safo? One is R S four C. Yes, yeah, so we're looking for here. So there's thirty eight places on the R S C. Osako. Senior man. Hello. Yeah. Osako, we can't oh, oh. hear you. I don't mind because you have have muted me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Back. Okay. So yes, to the, the the question, quick one. I mean, as we are screenwriters, okay, so we know what structure means. I mean, okay, structure so, is structure. So, um, Ivan, Ivan asked that African have a story for telling their narrative. And also, there's a pending question that is, what is the screenwriter's role in reshaping the, um, sorry, what is Af um, the relevant, re relevance of African telling um, the African story? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, structure, I mean, we are all screenwriting. So, you understand what structure means when it comes to storytelling. I mean, as you, every story definitely have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Or oh, act one, act two, act three. Uh, it was when I started writing for Hollywood that I saw that there are so many schools of thought when it comes to, you know, story structure. Some have the four story structure, some have the eight story structure, on and on and on and on. But basically, everybody agrees that a story must have a beginning, a middle and then an end. So we don't have anything like an African, whatever, you know, yeah. So that is for that one. Now on your question, uh, why? Why should we tell the African story or why should we have the African story? Uh, there's a saying that every great art people tell their own stories. Oh, this every one is great for art people <laughs> tell their own stories. And uh, if you want to see this thing, go to the American embassy. You go and see it there. It is boldly written there that every bit of people, they tell their own story. Now, I will tell you something that late musician Hugh Masakela of South Africa once said. He said, with the way Africans keep drifting away from who we are, a time will come that an African man will live in the same house with his, fa with his child. And then the child will ask him, Father, is it true that a time ago we used to live in a place called Africa? Okay, so a father is living in Kaneshi Dansoman, Joulu. 
with his child. Then his child will ask him, our father, is it true that we once lived in a place called Africa? Now, why would a child ask that kind of question? Because there is nothing distinctive again about us as a people. We have just washed away all things that make us unique. So therefore, as screenwriters, as storytellers, it behoves on all of us that as we tell our stories, that should appeal not only to Africans, but then to the global world, we should always put in the element that will make somebody say that, hey, this, no, wait a minute, this thing is from Africa. Oh no, this thing, no, 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 it's Africans who behave like this. We should always put it in there. I write horror for Hollywood, okay? I don't write script for African movie industry. No, I don't do that. I'm writing script solely for Hollywood. Nonetheless, because I know I'm an African, I always make sure that I will create some African character somewhere and then make sure that he or she will speak either Cree or some Yoruba. In fact, one of my scripts, which I won several awards, Imagine It, that's the title, it's a horror movie. But I deliberately created a Nigerian character, deliberately. I made sure that I twisted the plot in such a way that I can create an African character. I have another story whereby I even gave a white, an African name, a white. I gave him an African name. And I made sure that I plotted the story in such a way that he has some lineage from Africa. He was born in Africa and then taken to where? To America, trying to put in the Ghanaian, the African identity in it. So as script writers from Africa, as African script writers, let us always put in that element that will make somebody say, hey, this is what? This is Africa, this is from Africa. There's a Hollywood movie in which a character spoke Chi. Trust me, there was a time a blogger did a story about it and it appears everybody loved it that, hey, Look at it, a Hollywood movie. The guy is speaking tree. You see, it gives you a sense of joy that I'm watching a Hollywood movie and I'm seeing my identity in there. This is what we are talking about. Okay, so please, let us try all we can. It's not for us anyway, if you choose not to tell any story that will look like Africa, I mean, no problem. But then for me, I am doing it in my own small way. I try to enter Hollywood with my African story. Now let me share this little experience with all of you. I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, it was not going. So at a point, I started having this idea that why? Is it this some kind of subtle racism? They are saying that, hey, the guy is a Ghanaian, so hey, myself, pack yourself somewhere. So at a point, I wanted to even stop the story. You know, I didn't want to really continue developing it at all until i got in touch with a hollywood you know uh, in fact she used to work with disney she's called laurie ashbourne i found laurie ashbourne online and then i sent her a message and then i asked her that lauren i'm trying to enter hollywood i am an african script writer and i'm trying to enter hollywood with my african story but in as much as i keep pushing and pushing it is not going Laurie Ashbourne, who is a white, she is a woman, advised me that Osafo, don't lose your voice and don't stop telling your African stories. If you tell it well, it doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter where you are in Germany. Hollywood will welcome you. So Laurie Ashbourne let me send the script to her so that she give me coverage. Now listen to what happened. When I sent the story to Laurie Ashbourne, she read the story. And she said, wow, this story is very unique, highly unique. As soon as I read it, I could clearly tell that this is an African story. However, Laurie advised me that I should take certain elements out of the story because those elements can only be understood by people who are Africans. Those elements in the story, if an American is to see those things, he'll be like, hey, Wait a minute, what is this? And this is one of the things that I put in the story. Something like uh, our depot. You know the Krobos and their depot? 
when she saw that scene, whereby you see people, girls doing puberty, puberty, puberty right, with the, uh, with the breast bare, she said, no, oh, I mean, if this thing should get on to, to any American, you'll be like, what? Are you trying to sexualize women, present women like some sex, whatever? And I told her that, oh, no, no. I mean, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to sell porn in my, in my screenplay, no. It is a culture. It is an African thing. It was when I explained to her that she was like, oh, really? You know, when she saw it, she said, no, this is too, this is too graphic. This is too, how, how could you? Girls of age, you are talking about girls in 13, 14, bare breasts in, in, in public. No, you can't take this to America. So I had to explain to her that, Lorraine, I'm not trying to put porn in my this thing, no. But then it is a culture of the African. And I told her that it is even practiced up to today in this 21st century. That is how the culture is. So she advised me that, okay, Osafo, you have a very great writing skill. Your, your visual writing is very alluring. So I'll advise you that write scripts that Hollywood can identify with. When you are able to penetrate, then you can then use your talent to tell your African stories. But for now, it will be very difficult to penetrate with the African story. Wow. That's, that's a very interesting story. And thank you very much for sharing it. Well, Most grateful. Any uh, aspiring screenwriter who wants to break into Hollywood should get a few pointers from here. Um, and this actually leads us to the next question that we want to like touch. But then let me read, because we are interacting with the people that are watching us on live. Thank you very much for watching us. Uh, let, let, let us read some of the comments that they are contributing. So Pascal Hayson says, nice one, big man. You, are, you guys are doing the most. That goes to Gracie. <laughs> and Nana Peku, Mamfi says, keep up the good work. Basically, you hear more of this, more of this. And Johan, Johannes Krug says, interesting discussion. If any of you have seen Divine 419, how would you see this see it in this context? I think that was when we were talking about the general view on African storytelling. So he asks, um, how would you see Divine 419 in this context? I found Stellas and, Stellas and Joe's remark very valid. Samuel K.O. Achampon says, hi, Kwesi, how can the, oh, okay, sorry. He's asking how they can contribute. Um, Luis Efua says, great con contribution, Joe. Anita is clapping for everybody. We thank Allah. And uh, Daniel, I, I'm not very good in pronouncing names. So Daniel says, social relevance of the stories we tell is very key. And Luis, Luisa Efua says, people can relate to context. And that's exactly what Joe was saying. This is um, when we're talking about, I think that was when we're talking about the relevance of the, the olden um, um, technique of telling stories. I should have started reading the comments very earlier. Sorry. Um, okay, so um, Samuel contributes something very long here. Yeah. It says, currently, the kind of stories African needs are stories that are, that are proposed to drive social, economic, and econo social, cultural, and economic change. The gener th this generation needs to, let me take this again. Samuel says, currently, the kind of stories African needs are stories that are proposed to drive social, social, cultural, and economic change. This generation needs that kind of revolution. Can the African storyteller take this generation back to the years before slavery so that we can know how powerful, noble, and rich African were, Africans were? Can the African storyteller take this generation forward into the future to ignite hope in the African people? Storytellers have the responsibility to the people they, re they, they represent. Um, I think we, we, should, we should talk about, we should, we should touch this. What do you think about this, Osako? Taking the story uh -huh. back to before slavery. Yeah, I mean, story. if we really have to talk about telling the African story in this 21st century, 
my biggest suggestion would be for us to go back to uh, our 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 African literary works. Okay, you know we all watch Hollywood movies. Then sometimes you see based on based on story by most of those movies were based on what novels, comic books, and stuff like that. Okay, and those writers who wrote were Af American so script writers. Okay, who adapted you know novels written by Americans, and so therefore. Uh, they are able to tell their story well. I mean, imagine picking a story like Anoa by uh, Amaata Edu. And then as a modern day screenwriter, I screenplay Anoa into a movie. Definitely I'm telling the African story. Why? Because the story itself was told from an Af African perspective and written by an African. And so those African elements would definitely come out very loud. If you are an African scriptwriter in today's world and you want to tell African stories the way we are living, trust me, currently you don't have that African story. Currently, we don't have it. Now it's about slave queen. It's about somebody this. It's about nudity here and there. So currently, that African, true African story that we want to share you won't see it and you won't find it. It's not there. But they are all hidden in our literary books. Books written by Ayukwe, Ama, the Kobna Sechis. I mean, all these books are there. We can go and adapt them and then use them to tell the African story. So for me, this is one of the biggest solutions we can use to tell the African stories. Go back for our African literature and then pick those stories. I mean, Imagine using a story like The Blinkers by Kobna City to tell, you know, a motion picture story. It will be so intriguing. Yeah, The um, Blinkers. Mm, it will be yeah, so yeah, intriguing. Yeah. Okay? I, so for me, I believe as young screenwriters who want to tell the African story, let us go back and adapt those kind of literary okay. works. It will really help us. It will guide us a lot. But if we are to say we are looking around to tell our stories, my <laughs> brother, there's nothing in Africa. We have lost wow. our distinction. Yeah, thank you. I think I think I think I think I, think, think, um, I strongly disagree been, with that. Just <laughs> um, I okay. think Talasi has been um the network has cut Talasi totally out of this conversation. Please can we hear from him what he thinks about this? Who Salasi? Yeah. Yes. So, oh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Hear I hear me now. I hear me. Okay. So I think I bet you give out. Because if you keep going back, what's what's happening now? You have to look at what's happening now. Oh, I can't hear Salasi. Salasi, I think you should do without the my if you can do without the 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 earpiece. I think the earpiece. Earpiece. Okay. Yeah. If you can do without the earpiece. Can you hear me now? Okay, we can hear you. Am I okay now? No, the network is still what? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the network is still what? Yeah. Oh, Charlie. Okay, let's take let's take Joe's 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 Joe's. Yeah, I mean that was that was a great submission by Osafu, but. I, I, I strongly disagree with a lot of things that he's saying that we really need to go back to Blankart, we need to go back to Anoa, we need to go back to the marriage of Anasawa to be able to tell our stories. Those were stories that were written by other story writers like, and, and, and in their time it did fit. And in this time as well, it does fit perfectly. That's why right from the onset, I went like in telling the African story, time is of relevance as well. Africa is moving with time. We are moving as a people. You cannot really entirely discredit what is happening in 2020 Africa just because you really want to run with the African story of, of, of Blinkart, of Blinkart, of Anoa, of Marriage of Anaswa. Those were amazing books that I read, and those books were the books that really wanted to make me a writer. But then, and now, those were stories that happened there. Doesn't mean like we are shutting our eyes to like our truth or what is happening right now. Who is, doesn't mean like in five years or in 20 years or in 30 years, that's like in 2040, 
That means do screenwriters in 2014 now need to look back and write about stories now. Like you said, he's talking about Slay Queens now and everything now. In 2020, do we look back and tell the Slay Queen story now? Or do we look back and tell what kind of stories do they have to tell uh, in, 20, in 2030 or in 2040 or in 2050? This is also a time, and as much as we are actually living in this time, we should tell the story that is of this time. And it's not, it's not, we don't have to put the entire responsibility on screenwriters or script writers to be able to tell that story. Everyone has a story they want to tell. And as every person, as every writer, your voice, your voice actually is pronounced in your stories. You should be able to tell your own stories. If you wake up one morning and go like, okay, so Blinkart is the story I want to tell. Yeah, go ahead and tell that Blinkart story. If Marriage of Anasua is the story you want to tell, go ahead and tell that story. If Slay Queen's story is the story you want to tell, tell that story. Slay Queens are people, I mean, beyond, beyond Slay Queens, beyond taking pictures, and posting their pictures online. These people have lives. These people have families to go to. These people have reasons why they are slave queens. Like, what is their story? That's another story that has come to stay with us as Africans. We can't really erase out the parts of Africans because we really want the Hollywood to accept us. We have girls here who are slave queens, yeah. And I really applaud them. We have girls here who are lawyers. We have girls here who are doctors. And I really do not like it when people really want to tell the African stories and then they bring slave queens to discredit the, the, the part of our stories. Slave queens are a part of us. Lawyers are a part of us. Doctors are a part of us. Prostitutes are a part of us. These people, they all come together to make us as a society. So we can't really shut our eyes on these people to be able to go like, okay, fine, let's tell the African story. In terms of the African stories, we can't shut a part of Africa out. They are part of Africa. They are, like, we really with them they are our sisters they are they are our, our followers we sat in class with them we go for parties with them this is africa this is africa now we have our voices now we should use our voice yeah, now that is in 50 years we want in 50 years we want children to tell a story of 2020 what did we do in 2020 that we were not able to tell our stories that we have to leave for people to come and so if you wake up one day and you want to tell if you wake up one day and marry is a story you want to tell or if you were, yeah, we were indoors. Thank you very much. You were indoors. If you wake up one day and blink out as a story you want to tell, go ahead and tell it perfectly. But then don't find it, don't burden yourself with the need to be able to sound African by, by really going all out to tell these stories. What is happening right now? Instagram is a part of our culture now. Instagram is a culture now. Facebook is a culture now. Waking up and picking Uber, requesting for Uber ride is a culture now. We can't tell me like Uber is not a part of our culture now. It is. Both is a part of our culture now. Going to also to get drunk and then not even remembering how you go home is a culture now. So I just feel like... Uh, 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 um, Joe, 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 yeah. Joe. Someone says this generation needs that kind of revolution of stories that drive social, cultural, and economic change. That is what I'm saying. Social, cultural, and economic like change. It so you can be listen. telling a slave queen Sorry. Excuse me, excuse me. What is, what is culture to you? What is culture to you? Define culture for me. You see, for instance. No, define for culture. Instance. I just want to define, I want you to just define culture and just end it there. Like, is just there, define culture, culture for me. That's all. Just, just thank you, thank you. Thank you. It's a way of life. Is Slay Queen a way of life for us now? Yes, it is a way of life. It is a part of our life now. No, I don't think, um, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Osafo was taking that aspect of our life off, but then no, he's I not taking that all. aspect off. Not at he's all. not taking that aspect off. But he's not taking that aspect off. But then expecting filmmakers or expecting screenwriters to actually go back and tell these stories when they are, it's like putting a burden or responsibility. No, no, no. If it's you not wake a burden. Up, if, if that's the story you want to tell, if that is the story you want to tell, go ahead and no. tell it. If that's not the story you want to tell, don't tell it. I feel like everyone really has a voice. What do you want to use your yes. voice for? But Joe, what do you Joe. want to use your voice for? Uh, let I, me, I, I, Naj, Naj, let me yeah. let me come in here. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah, Charlie. Okay, so now let's 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 all look at this. Yeah. Um, Amma is in the is in the diaspora, and then all of you. So now, when you take a trend and look at Hollywood, now for the past three years. Biopic and biopic films have been the new trend in Hollywood. Do we all agree to that? And do oh, we sure, see that sure. when it comes to film? They are going yeah. back and telling a lot of their stories. They are telling they are telling a lot of their old stories. Yeah. Of people, Harriet. Biopic stories Harriet is one stuff. of them. Yeah. Now, what are they seeing? This is my question is to everyone, even though I want Joe to also answer this. I think Abba would answer that. And then Joe can take something on that. But 
biopic has all of a sudden become the new trend of storytelling. And all of a sudden, it has become that reassurance for us, knowing what happened in the past to see it on screen. My in very, a modern my day. Very, yeah, in, a, in, in modern day. Now, it goes a long way to teach us a lot of things. Just not to tell us about their story back then, but as well, to also tell us and educate us on what a life was then and what it is today. And I appreciate a lot of, I am, I am a lover of biopics because it's, to me, it's, it's one of my favorite stuff. But when you come to Africa, Joe is, like Joe rightly said, we are telling a lot of our modern day, today stories, today's Lee Queen, today that, today that, today that. But my problem with that is of what value is that story or today's modern story, how long can we tell that story consistently? Leaving the Yas and twice the Kwame Commander, because for, 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 for a very long time in Ghana, we, we have not touched on any of our stories, any of our biopics, not, none. We're always trying to look forward and tell new stories. So to me, I don't see going back to tell biopic stories as something that is bad, but I Not think it's all. required. I think, I think it's very required that we, we as African script, script writers begin to dig and open up the archives and tell great stories that pushes the boundaries, stories of Nkoma, stories of, of, of uh, what, what are their names? Yasantua, King uh, Ozetutu, um, Kofanache. all the great stories, Kofanache, all the great stories, Agokoli, um, because recently you realize that if if you follow the trends, uh, what was his name? Oh, the director for Black Panther, what was his name? He, he keep forgetting him. Um, Kugler. Ryan Kugler. Yeah, Ryan, yes, great. Ryan is in development right now. They are developing a story about Kim Masamusa right now to, to, to shoot. And that is an African story. This is Ryan somewhere trying to tell our trying to tell an African story. When, it, when, when are Africans going to stand up and tell their own bioethics, tell their own stories? The, the story that gives us strength. Are we ever going to go there? Is it important? What is the relevance of, of, of that? Because honestly, honestly, the little I know, those are the stories that Hollywood is looking for. The oh, bioethics yeah. stories, the great, uh, you know, the stories that is not just like them every day, uh -huh. unless maybe we don't want to, unless we don't want to cross our borders and break boundaries, unless we want to stay in Africa and in Ghana and do our everyday slay queen, do our everyday back to back, uh, choco, trotro, and all of those stuff kind of stories. Uh, and I don't know what you guys think. They say, they say uh, if you don't know where you are coming from, don't know where you are going. Always have to will be hazy for you. Um, I don't know. I want to. I don't know. I want to hear what um, Abba has to say about going back to tell the the stories. The before stories. Slavery, yeah. The stories before slavery. So it ties into a lot of things. Telling the story about before slavery, um, making films out of novels. The first thing I thought of was Yeah Jesse's Homegoing, the novel where it's, a, it's um, a broad scope of a family that started pre-slavery, through slavery, all the way through the um, family's history in America and the family's history in Ghana, and then brings them back together again. And I think it's such a beautiful example of what we're talking about right now, because it is, it is a historical account and it is present at the same time. And I think it's possible to be able to do both. I agree. I think that we should be telling our own stories. And I think that when it comes to biopics, we should be telling them. But at the same time, when someone like a Ryan Kugler, who God knows has done his research, decides to take on a project like this, we're all going to be watching. And he knows that we're all going to be watching. So he's not going to fail in that aspect. But I do think that it is important that we tell the story the way that we know the story is to be told. 
and for someone like her in in this book home going it's it's a beautiful combination of all the things that we discussed because it is a novel and it is historical and it is also very current everything that she discussed no matter where you are what part of the diaspora you're in you can relate to something that was said in the book so i think it's possible to do both at the same time Right. Thank you, Abba. Let me just let me continue with the comments. Let me just finish it up. Then we we'll go to the next question. So Pascal Hayes in his book, he says uh, he, he sends a link. Wait, maybe you can check it out. He says this is an African story. This is also an African story. Majority of African writers focus more on Western world. That won't depict, depict us vividly. He also says Black Panther has some costumes that were traced to Ghana and other sites in Africa, like we're discussing. Um, Aram Evans Adoko says, Heritage Africa, Kukrantumi Road, Accra, Love Road in Africa on port, are all, he, 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 he didn't write a full thing, so. Things Fall Apart are all African narratives. Things Fall Apart is an African story. There is an expression in African story that has, there's an, there is, expression an African story has. So as writers, we need to set the tone from the beginning. Okay, Samuel says, Samuel Achampon says, it is in our interest to tell our own stories. If we leave it for other, any other race to do that for us, the intentions are usually different and sometimes ill motivated. This hurts a generation in the long run. Great, this hurts a generation in the, in the long run. Now, for me, Not enough. Well, man. It's up you here. say we should speak about real. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're back now. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry. We, we story, storytellers or filmmakers, I said we, filmmakers, storytellers, we are like the modern, modern day girls. We are supposed to tell stories that would inform generations that come after us like we were informed by the generations that came before us. So it is very important when you are writing, you put a pen to paper, you remember that there is a generation that would one day come back to your story and take it to be what, to be your history or to be a depiction of what was happening in your time. Also, um, Mawe Alassan says, uh oh, internet is, says there are great directors who are telling wonderful African stories, but the platform to showcase it to the world is lacking. Stella, Aram Evans Adoko says, Stella, you can, you, can still tell the, you can still tell that story of being a woman in an African story. Example, check Professor Amar Tabidi's story. And, Joe, and he, he agrees with Joe's comments completely. And okay, so let's go to our next question. What is the role of screenwriters in reshaping the African narrative? What role do each and every one of us, I think Salasi is back, so please Salasi take this one for us. What is your role as a screenwriter in reshaping the African narrative? Before that, let me say this, uh, with the uh, subsequent um, with the previous conversations that has been uh, made on this platform, a lot of the people, like the the f members of the film crew, will always say when you ask what can be done to reshape the African narrative to promote the African narrative, or what is what steps can be taken to improve African storytelling, they always say a script, a script, and then the screenwriter. We have the screenwriters here, those who are responsible for making that script everybody is pushing like it's pointing hands at because everyone every single person that has been here um, speaks about the script so what is the role of the screenwriter in reshaping the african narrative thank you okay so i hope you can hear me now yes. yeah, yeah, yeah it's better okay so i i feel that we've been telling we've already been telling the african story 
but I don't think we've been scripting it right. So I think in a way I agree with those who think that the problem has been with the scripts because if you want to, there's a difference between telling a story and writing a story. There's a huge difference. And if you see how, if you read, let's say, if you take the Lord of the Rings, if you read the story, it's different. The feel you have from the movie is different from what you when you read the book itself. They put some, um, should I say, theat there's a theatric feel to the story when it's put on the screen. Then when, but what we do here is we just want to write the story just as it is. We don't put it in the form of a screenplay where we have um, a character that people can feel empathy for. Most people just watch films and they don't feel. Film is about feeling. And people just watch films and then like, they are just enjoying what's going on on the screen, but they are not feeling anything for the character. So that's basically what I think. Okay. Thank you very much. So Salas is saying we are not scripting it right. Can we hear from you, um, Stella, please? I agree. I agree with the not scripting and right. Um, because you can't write something you, 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 you don't relate to. Um, talking about going back to um, write, like film things that have already been done or talking about those kind of things. If you don't relate to it, you can never um, bring it out right. You can never script it right. So I believe that writing a story is something like something you can put yourself into. So if you're going to tell a story about Africa as Africans. You should write, it should be about something you can relate to. You can't, you can't just say you're writing an African story because you're an African and you don't relate to the topic. Maybe, um, maybe someone relates to um, corporal punishment, maybe in school, in our educational sector. That's what the person can relate to. Let the person tell that story. Maybe you relate to our olden time, um, maybe in chieftaincy before slavery, maybe you can relate to those kind of stories. Then you should write something like that, but you can never write something you're not passionate about. It won't come out right. So um, when, so, when, when Stella, you're scripted, yeah. Is it really relating or you don't have like enough research on those topics? Because I feel like if you are a writer who is being commissioned to write, um, you don't really have to relate to the story they are giving you to write. So if you are, um, is it because we don't have enough research on those stories that we can relate to them? Or because I feel like as a writer, if they yeah, give myself. you enough research, you should be able to write the story. Yeah, and you should. Be you know, some people. There are people who write for money. There are people who write stories for money, and there are people who write stories for the passion of writing for it. And then so maybe yeah. you research on the topic. But then after researching, can you bring out a story out of your research? Can you bring something out? Maybe you have research, you have in-depth knowledge, but you are still not into what you are doing. Then it will still come out as just something. But when you put yourself into what you're writing and you're passionate about it, after doing your research, you can still bring out a very good script and a very good story. So if you're not very passionate about something, I think you can, do, you can still do your research and do something, but then you should give it to someone who is very passionate about that aspect. I don't know if you get me. Yeah, I get you. Uh, big man, Osafo, please can we hear from you? Guys, we are running out of time, so let's be sharp, sharp on our comments. Yeah. Azafu, your mic is off. Azafu, your mic is off. Put me on. Okay, I'm on. Yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, I think I've been a bit let down by Stella and then Joe, you understand? <laughs> because the essence of this whole discussion that we're having is that we are African storytellers, we are Ghanaian storytellers, and we want to tell our stories to, you know, the world, the globe, okay? So therefore, if you tell me as an African scriptwriter that uh, I have to feel passionate about it before I have to identify, then the question is, then what's the essence of the discussion we are having? 
Okay, Osamu, can I ask you a question? Okay. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I'm telling a story about African, let's say I'm telling a story about an African woman who, um, how they handled periods before, um, um, before these parts and stuff. You've never had a period before. And maybe you, mm -hmm. um, periods are something you don't really care about. Mm -hmm. So someone gave you money to do something up on periods, but you don't really care about periods. You're not really passionate about periods and you don't really know what goes, like what period is about, but then you've been given the money to do it. Uh -huh. So you are doing prehistoric something on periods, but you're not passionate about it. How are you going to do that? Um, let me awesome. tell you something as I write for Hollywood, okay? One of the things that Hollywood will tell you that as a script writer, one of your qualities should be research. Somebody who researches. I made for instance, mention of currently as I'm talking, for instance, currently as I'm talking, I'm writing a story that involves at least 40% of court scenes. The story is set in America. I am currently not living in America and I don't even know American laws because even every state has their own laws. Is it your but I'm story? living in Ghana. And I'm telling an American story. So what do I do? Is it your own? Is I, it I'm your researching own about it. Exactly, it's my own story. Uh -huh. so, so, so it's something you're interested in, right? No, <laughs> if, if I'm to even talk about interest, then maybe I wouldn't even start writing about the script at all because how, no, how, no, you, how, 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 how can you torture you yourself so much that you are no, living no, in Ghana what you want to and you are telling a story that involves legal scenes yeah, exactly. so about America? Exactly. Okay. You hey, so the essence of the discussion we are having is that we want to push an agenda. Okay? And the agenda, so, it shouldn't come like we say, oh, media, me, penny, say, so media, me, say. Then there's no agenda. And that is not how industries are built. Industries are built the on the back of teamwork, on the back of agenda. What is the agenda? You are missing, it is you about are missing people are feeling, oh, for me, this is what I feel. Oh, for me, this is what I feel. Then how are we going to move forward? In Hollywood, it's always about an agenda. And I'm saying, I'm saying really you can do your research. You are missing okay, the entire point. Okay, now, guys, guys, guys. Okay, guys, guys, <laughs> don't kill us. Yeah, so because you're on the land. No, Salasi was, I'm coming quickly. Salasi was just going to make oh. a quick point. Oh, okay, okay, let Salasi for the day. So, um, I was going to say, <laughs> Okay, so I was going to say that as a screenwriter, you should be able to write about anything, whether you're passionate about it. You're passionate about writing. That's what you're exactly. passionate about. Your passion is writing about a specific subject. The subject is just what you're writing about. And for it to be authentic, you should be able to research to make it look very like, make it relatable. If you're writing, if I should write about cramps, I should make a research whereby even a lady watches the movie. Exactly. Like, yeah, this is what happened. I, I don't have to have cramps to write about cramps. I don't have to be an old man to write about being an old man. So it, that is, uh, that, that's where the work comes in. That is where it becomes a work, where you are- That is where writer. passion comes in. I'm just trying to say, I'm just no, talking about passion. I'm thinking. Yes, there's the passion no. for writing. That one is yes. already. Passion for writing, but you can't write about everything, see, every single guys, thing. Guys, oh, if, if guys, That is what you have guys. to work on. Can I, can I say something? Can I say okay. something? If you okay, are, guys. hello. Okay. Hello. Okay. Uh, hello, yeah. hello. Yeah, Joe. Can I talk? Yeah, can yeah I feel like, Joe. okay, to be fair, to be fair. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Joe, you have one minute. Yes. One minute to okay. make it Okay, one minute. Okay, so to be to be fair, right? To be fair, let's get this point straight. As a filmmaker, as a writer, even in every profession at all, there are disciplines in it. Trust me, not everyone can write every genre. Not every genre is for everyone. You might I might not be able to write horror as beautiful as you be able to write horror. It doesn't make me any less of a good writer, or it doesn't make you any more of like a better writer than I am. Or, or but then let's go back to Kwesi did say something about the entire world, like really. Um, making Hollywood making a lot of biopic now. It's simple. Hollywood is making a lot of biopic before because 
we find ourselves in a space where the world is in a state of nostalgia. That's why people are remaking music. That is why people are dressing in the 80s. It cuts across in fashion, it cuts across in photography, it cuts across in music, it cuts across in, in everything around us right now. We are in a state where everyone wants nostalgic. We are in a state of nostalgia. That is what it is right now. And then talking about we going back to really write, as an industry, what we really need to do is people can set aside. Yeah, if you think biopic is like your strength, go ahead and make biopic. If you all go back and tell those stories, in 20 years, who is telling their stories now? We'll, uh, we'll end up having a generation of people who didn't have stories from this time. That is what is going to happen. And the problem is going to continue. We'll have a generation of people who didn't have stories from this time. And that's not what we are trying to do. And, 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 and it's like, um, Apart from that as well, like there is more, there's more to making a, there's more to making biopics or there, and there's more to telling period pieces than we actually think. And don't forget, we, we are in an industry where people do not even have budget. Yeah, let's make a yes to our film. Budget. Which land are we going to claim? Yeah, congrats. Big ups to Peter Sudufia for what he did for um, um, the last film he made. Psychic what was it called? Psychic. No, not a search. Aloe, aloe vera. Alo, alo, aloe vera. Aloe vera was a beautiful thing. So imagine making the Yasa into a film. Where are you getting the budget from to actually create an entire Ashanti kingdom? Don't forget there is budget. And don't forget we have a, we live in a space where people, we don't even have funds as an industry. You get it. And people are growing up. But people still need to make film. People still need to tell stories. So what I'm saying is, yeah, we have a lot of writers, but then not everything is for every writer. Don't force yourself to write something because you are trying to tell a story of yesterday or you are trying to tell the stories that you feel comfortable telling and that is when you are going to be able to tell the true and authentic story don't really tell stories because it hasn't been told and you feel like they need to really tell those stories yeah and and i don't think that is what stella is trying to say and and, and I, that is why i don't really agree with what osafo is saying okay yeah, and, yeah. And, no do you get what i'm saying yeah yeah we do, yeah, we they, do. They, they are they are journeys in filmmaking there is drama there is horror, there is, there, there is action, there is everything. And then not everyone can really write all those stories. But then really so, wanting people to tell these stories is being unfair to other people. Yeah, one minute. And then Joe, leaving... Joe, Joe. Yeah, one minute is over. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> OK, so um, yeah. So um, let, let's, uh, let uh, Sapo, Sapo, please do yeah. one minute. And then Abba can do, Abba can do another two minutes, and then we can. Go to our last question and wrap up. We have taken. Why is Abba doing two minutes? What? This is how racism started. Why is Abba doing two minutes? No, Abba has not been talking all this while. Hey, do. Hey, do. Give me the chance, man. Blah 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 it doesn't even have a second. It does not okay. 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 So first, you see, <laughs> I, I, I like Joe. I like Joe a lot. You know, uh, just that you know he's trying to jump, you know, the subject to uh, a lot of perspectives. Okay. We are talking about storytelling. We are writers. Okay. Uh, he talked about production for you know trying to shoot a movie like Yas and Twa. I mean, who doesn't know that biopics and historical fictions come with a huge cost? As I'm sitting here, I'm not a production person. I'm not a director. I'm not a, a cinematographer. We are talking about ourselves as storytellers. So let's talk about Yindi Elimu. Let's be in our lane. We are talking about the story first. Before, if you give it to a filmmaker, whatever he does with it is also a different board game altogether. It's another stage of the whole filmmaking process. So now we are saying that the first thing that you should start with is the script, the story. And so Alfred Hitchcock, he said something. He said to write a great story, a great movie is always about the story, the story, the story, or the script, the script, the script. So let us, you need a name, let us be in our lane. We are storytellers. And we are saying that we want the world to know that Africa also have got a voice. So therefore, let us tell stories that have got what? Our, our perspective, our voice, our destiny. And when I started my submission, when we started, I said, it doesn't mean that write a story where we will not see computers in it. We are not saying write characters who are not going to put on we. We are not saying don't you know, put in costume like uh, somebody wearing suit. That is not what we are saying. But we are saying that there are certain things that 
even though we are living in this modern day, Symbolism. there are still certain things about the African that you can still talk about. You can still put it in there so that everybody will be like, oh, okay, that's an African. For instance, as a storyteller, you write a, a story in which your protagonist is called uh, uh, maybe Michael, 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 Michael Anderson. Any person who hears the name of this protagonist will be like, ah, Michael, it sounds like an American name. So we are saying that if you're an African storyteller and you want to push the African agenda, then your character who is the protagonist should be called Osafo Anthony or Kwe Then these are some of the kind of African elements that we are all saying. Let us put it in our stories. No, no. no. I, had, I had a Michael Anderson in my class. And let me tell you about Michael Anderson. Michael, having a character called Michael Anderson makes you understand we as a people from where we are coming from. Yeah. There was colonization yeah, here. There was colonization. Yeah. There was colonization. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 Yeah, no, yeah, so no. what you are saying is having a, having, having a protagonist called Michael Anderson doesn't make the story less okay, African. Yo. It tells us, it, it no, takes us back to where we are coming from. It takes us back to where we are coming from. Someone is called Michael Michael Anderson. What is the person you are hearing about that? It's okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Tell the person okay. that. Tell the person. No, 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 Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so what I say saying that putting your African element, it can be in so many ways. It can be in costume. It can be in voice. It can be in the name that you give to the character. It can be in the world that you create. So many different ways. And this is not something that is difficult to do. So I don't see where uh, Abba, uh, I mean Stella and then Joe, where they are finding it so difficult with this whole thing about African boy that we want to push out there. Nobody say don't put a character who wears suit. No, but then you can put in that African signature that we are talking about in different forms: the voice, the 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 the, 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 the character traits, how the character behaves. You know, so many different ways we can still push it. it it's doable. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not talking here from you, Gracie. I think uh, this this conversation should happen again because writers are very key to telling their story. <laughs> Abba, can Abba, we hear have your two minutes. You? Eh? Abba, have your two minutes now. Really. Yes. I'm here to collect my two minutes. Okay. So, <laughs> similar to the conversation that we're having, I feel like this is the answers can be universal based on who is telling them who's having the conversation. I love to hear the different perspectives because in my opinion, they're all true. I think it's whoever is telling the story. I personally only tell stories based off of what my experience is. I, if I'm writing a male character, I speak to men about the, their voice so that I can make it accurate in the same way that I would not want a room or group of men or a man to tell my story without asking me if it is authentic. So personally, I write from a place of experience and that includes my experience as a Ghanaian. So <laughs> the same thing you were saying about name, make, making sure that you name characters or put things in there that we can relate to and identify with, I think that's very important. But I also think that that is very personal. So if that is not your lane, like you said, and if that is not the story that you want to tell, or if you feel like what you're expressing is going to be universal for anybody who watches it, they can relate to it and identify it with it, then more power to you. That's not my personal experience, but I can't knock somebody else who decides to do that. I think that's the beauty of the business that we're in, is that we can all share our stories from either our own personal experience or writing and studying and doing the research on somebody else's experience and then giving our take on it. I don't think either is wrong. I think they're both correct. Is that, was that two minutes? Should I keep going? Yeah. <laughs> add more, add more. I want to have, yeah, wanna have my time. full let's two try minutes, time. okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I think you've that's you've wrapped up you've you've wrapped up everything and you sound up everything uh, nicely. I think both Joe, um, everyone is is right in their own accord. Um, and story writing comes from a lot of places, a lot of things, uh, a, a lot of elements go in there. I've tried writing, I've, I've done, tried like doing script writing a little, and it's not an easy thing. So, <laughs> so kudos to you guys. Uh, not so well. <laughs> so you guys are doing amazing. And it, it comes with a lot of elements, okay? It comes with a lot of elements. And Joe is right, um, a software is, is, is right as well. Everyone is right because like Abba said, it's dependent on who is telling the story, from what perspective and the amount of research the person is willing to make. However, it's very important as well as Africans that we also have an agenda as to how to put um, Africa as the Africa, the Africa cinema on the globe. And I think that in as much as we want to be as authentic as possible, we need to all come together and have a common agenda as to where do, you, where do we want to take the African cinema in the next 5, 10, 15 years? And what do we need to do to make sure that we achieve that, that goal or that agenda is, is very important. I wrote something here, I said, uh, I, I think a lot of writers in, in Ghana like to write too much about their feelings. They, they, they like to write too much about their, their feelings. And professionals like yourself have experience where you've been commissioned to write various and several different scripts. And you do your research and you, you, you write. I think it's time that we kind of like, you know, begin to have that common goal as to what we all want to achieve in, achieve in this African cinema or in this Ghanaian film or whatever it is we want, we want to call it. Where do, we, where do we want to go with all of this? Joe's new world, Joe and, uh, and Stella's new world, Safo and uh, maybe myself and I don't, I don't know if Alassie. we have the support of Najila and Talassi. I'm a British And I'm a, our, our biopic world how do we bridge both worlds in a way that, like Amma rightly said, we have we are telling great stories which are pushing economic moral boundaries at the same time keeping those modern elements as Joe is talking about. It's very important that we have this conversation so that at the end of the day, we're able to have, like Nudge said, everybody in the industry is blaming screenwriters for bad films. And that is why I put all of this together. Because the question was, everybody is saying the script, the screenplay, the script, write good story, right? So I just want, we, we just wanted to listen to the screenwriters talk and see what they are ordealists and what their challenges as well in being an African uh, screenwriter is. And it's very, it, it has been very enlightened knowing the perspective in the industry. It's, trust me, today's conversation has been very, very enlightening. And I really, really appreciate everybody. So I think now we will jump to the last let, question let me, and then yeah, we'll let, just me, run. let me come in with the with some comments as we are interacting with our Facebook, with our guys on Facebook. Then uh, we'll move forward to our last question and with it. Okay, so um, Ivan Clergy says, I believe it will be difficult for us as Ghanaians to write very accurate period pieces before slavery because we lack documentation. The English can tell these stories because they are way of, because their way of life, what they were, how they thought were easily found in writings to be referenced and inspirations gained. I believe if I tell a story about what I go through now, where I am and how I feel, it is an African story, be it bougie or false. Telling African stories should not end up restricting the writer's creativity. I think Ivan is like swinging the way of Joe and Stella. And Ivan, if Aram Ivan Adoko says, the role of screenwriter is to celebrate what we have, we have like we have like Africans. We should show what we have 
language props, African English, beautiful landscape, etc. Mm -hmm. We need to be deliberate introducing our African roots. I agree with the first writer by saying he is intentionally bringing something about Africa in Hollywood films. So I agree with him. I think this Aram is basically swinging the way of Osafo. <laughs> so you see, everybody is like taking sides right now. Aram says again that I wish to, I know. Uh, Aaron says, I wish to challenge this team today to write an African script together. There are African stories we can do together. Uh, can that be possible? What's an African script? <laughs> Basically, I think, I think, I don't know what an African script is. And you also said an Africa, African English. I mean, I don't understand that as well. Yeah. What, is, what is African English? What is really African English? I think, um, uh, I, yeah, I think African English cannot be defined. Because yeah, every, so. every single um, oh, there, there, there community there has a different. Let me, let, me share, let me share my experience with you. There is, there is something that we call uh, the American English. Okay, you know, Africa is too broad, Osafo. <laughs> let's talk. I mean, yeah. Like, even in no, Ghana. No, but let's listen. Let's listen to him. Let's listen to him. <laughs> Tell us yeah, about African English. Our time, our time is up, guys. It's not like that. that. <laughs> it's not like, we are running out of time. It's not like uh, it's not like uh, they are experts in uh, Africa who have created a new you know English lexicon. But then yeah. there are certain expressions, there are certain phrases that as soon as somebody uses it, it will confuse ah, yeah, you in your mind. You'll be like, ah, what is this guy trying to say? But then somebody who is let's say a Ghanaian will be like, oh, he's trying to say this. So for instance, we say something like a Ghanaian is standing with you. He is going, but then he'll tell you, Charlie, I'm coming home. The person is going, yet he's telling you, <laughs> I'm coming. coming. So then the how, does, how does, how does, how does, how does someone in Kenya, how does someone in Kenya, how does someone in Kenya translate this to be African English? Yes. How does someone in Zimbabwe, how does someone in Tanzania, how does someone in South Africa? What the person is trying to say, when he means by African English. You no, don't, don't, don't think what he's saying. Like, how are you thinking for the best? My country. I'm like, okay, country. So, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, okay. let me continue so with the comments. Um, okay, yes. Aaron again says he agrees with Osafo. We need to research on any African story to, or any other stories. He agrees with Osafo. And I, on the research about we getting our documentation, please, African I believe words. you can trace, you can trace any story because Africa, remember, we are we, we had oral um we had our oral way of preserving our narratives and not even oral alone. I mean they are generally I have a book on American, American history. Like, had, I do have a book. Had a, we had a you can read. No, I'm, forget about the books mostly. Look go, go, I, go to go to the go to the the people, go to the people whose story you want to tell. Great. I'm missing it. Okay. <laughs> okay, not enough. Let's let's yeah. let's go to our last question. Let's go to, if there's a comment, let's let's just go to our last question and go. Yeah, we've taken a lot of time today. We've taken a lot of time today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um how okay, so our final 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 question. <laughs> I have two more, but uh, let me let me let me ask both two. I mean, let me ask both of the questions. But then two people will answer this one, and then the other two answer this. How does one find his or her voice as a screenwriter challenging the status quo in Ghana, in Africa? Here, I think um, Osafo should answer this. Yeah, I I, I think we've we've we if I may be right, we've we've already we've gone around on that. Yeah, about that, no, um, um, I, I think I really think that we need to have like a defined like this should be very short. I think it's a one minute. It should be the one minute thing. We should have like very defining statements. We were going around it, but let's have a direct answer to this. So because as a live video, people can always go back to it. Anytime they go back to it and they get to this question, they have a definite answer to it. Okay, so we can do that. Can, we, can, we, can, we can do that. Osavo, one minute for you. Please don't go beyond one minute. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, so can I talk now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So as writers, uh, we understand what is meant by, you know, a writer's voice. A writer's voice is basically uh, something that any person uh, reads what you've written or your works, your projects, and can readily tell that, oh, yes, this thing, I suspect it's Osafu, or this thing was written by Osafu. When you go to Hollywood, I mean, it's there. People have their voices. Quentin Tarantino, you know, have his voice. People will tell you there's too much violence in his movies and stuff like that. And he tell them, hey, that is my voice, whether I like it or not. So as soon as you see his works, you see that that signature is always in there. So therefore, as African writers, we can also have a voice. It depends on individual basis. Somebody might choose that, okay, my voice is that. Uh, I like writing about a lot about, you know, female protagonist, okay? Somebody can say, oh, my voice is that for me, I always want evil to even win over good. It's a voice. So, so it comes in different, different forms, depending on what you want to be known for. What is your voice? Somebody wants a lot of sex scenes or nudity. That is the fellow's voice. Somebody wants violence. That's the person's voice. So as African writers, if you want to have a voice, it depends on you. What do you want to be known for? So that one will be an individual thing. It even goes or ties in with genre. What genre do you want to write in? You want comedy? You want horror? You want you know, drama? You know, yeah. So that one there, if we are trying to have an agenda of telling the African story, voice should be something that is always come on an individual basis. Uh, we can't go with one particular voice that, oh, let us go with this, let us go with nudity, or let us go with violence. That one is an individual thing. Everybody chooses what. But then it is the story that we are telling, the theme, the culture that comes with it, the perspective that comes with it, that we are all saying that, let us go with what we have as Africans. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Osafo. <clears throat> Do we all, I mean, I think um, he made really, really great points. And let's move to the next question and the next person. Key suggestions to fellow writers, industry stakeholders, and governments. What I, um, but before that, let's take this question from um, Samuel, right? He says script writing or storytelling is a big business in Hollywood and other film industries elsewhere. Can we talk about how script writers are able to feed their families through this service they offer to the film industry in Ghana? I think um, Joe should take this one. Thank you. This is very interesting. Thank you very much for the question. And I feel, um, first of all, to be a filmmaker in Ghana or to be a script writer in Ghana is, 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 I think, setting yourself up, setting yourself up to be like taking three steps forward and then five steps back. Because trust me, you can't really feed yourself with being a screenwriter in Ghana. Because like everyone who really approaches you, everyone who slides into your DM where the project goes like, oh, it's a low budget. But then luckily for me, I have gotten to a point where I've gotten to a point where I don't really have to go all out to look for projects to work on. I often just sit relax and then based on recommendations, I really have people coming to me to give me their projects. And one thing people really forget to do is whenever they come to you, right, they really they tell you it's a low budget movie, it's a low, it, it, it's a low budget film. And I feel like if it's a low budget film, then you should as well look for someone who like will probably write for you as a low budget. And as much as it is low budget for you, it is business for me. I should I, I should first of all be interested in it before before I do. And then if you want to be a script writer in Ghana here, you need to find a supplementary job because that alone cannot really put food on your table because one, every producer thinks he or she can write. Every producer in Ghana thinks he or she can write. And two, every producer in Ghana thinks he or she have a story, like he or she has a story, which is super valid for the, for the, the, second, the second point is super valid because everyone really has a story, but it really takes, it only takes a good writer to be able to translate your story into whatever you really want it to look like for you. So the thing is, people don't really set out to go look for writers. People already have their stories in their head already, or they think they have their stories in their head already. And when you sit with them to actually listen to their stories, you only hear that, okay, it's just an idea that they have. They know that, okay, at the beginning of the story, 
Joe got on Zoom call with six other writers or Joe got on Zoom call with five other writers. And at the end of the day, he disagreed with whatever Osafo said. That is the story. But then they tell you that is the story and that is the story they have. And you as a writer, for them, they have given you a story. As far as they are concerned, they've given you a story. Not taking into consideration what Joe ate before getting on the, uh, on the Zoom call, not getting into consideration what Osafu's day look like, what Osafu look like, who is Osafu. They don't really know all these things. So for them to really pay you to write a script for you, it's like they're giving you all the story. And now they don't even want to pay you for that because it looks like they can write. And that is why we have a lot of terrible movies in Ghana, trust me, because every producer thinks he or she is a writer. And that is why we have like terrible movies. And trust me, this is from my standpoint and from what I'm saying, you can't make a living being a screenwriter in Ghana. That is it, you can't make a living being a screenwriter in Ghana. Unless the other four of you are really making an amazing living, you would like to share your secret with me. But as far as I'm concerned, I, you, need, you, need, you, need to, you need to treat it as a hobby. Because the whole point is it's coming in today. The next time someone approaches you for another screenwriting gig, it's like July next year. And in between now and July next year, you get people approaching you with projects that you don't want to write. And people approach you with projects that are telling you it's a small budget. If it's a small budget, just go away, please. So that's it. <laughs> okay, how about? Um. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I think that when you're entering this business, everybody comes in with wide eyes and expecting that, you know, they're going to find success and you should, or else you won't find the drive to be able to complete the projects that you need to complete. So I think it is important to come in with the expectation that you're going to have success. Yes. But I also think that there is a level of realism that everybody needs to have working in any aspect of the entertainment industry, which is that it is fickle, especially when it comes to finances. So same thing in terms of somebody approaching you saying that it's low budget. I've certainly done the same thing to other people because I didn't have the money to pay for it. <laughs> so I understand it when people say that to me, but I'm, I'm not at the point anymore where I want to work on those type of projects. Somebody else may, but I do feel like for anybody that has the intention to be in this business that wants to have success in this business. It is a long game and there has to be something else that you are invested in financially that is going to be able to bring you some level of stability or else you'll take it out on the work and you'll end up being upset with the work when it's not the work. Okay. Thank you, Abba. Um, of course. I just have this, this one. This is not the last question, but so what do we see? What 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 do we actually where do we actually get it wrong in the current scripts that we have in about African films? All the scripts, the African I mean films made in Africa so far. What is what is it that we are not getting? Why is it that what what is the missing piece that is stopping our film from going commercial? Because a lot of this um, uh, film crew members, when they come on the show, be it um, our directors, be it directors, be it um, camera people, they always say the problem is in their script. So what is the current script getting wrong? What's the current script I think, getting wrong? I think Abba should answer this question because I, I want to know the, you know, the diaspora perspective of, yeah. um, of, of, um, the script writer seeing films from from africa and, and stories from africa screenplays from africa what do you think you know the african writer in general is is, is missing because I, I know you're working you, you know you've had experience and exposure in working in some of these um, agencies and stuff so what do you think some of you know some of the african writers are getting wrong um I don't even know if it's that there's anything that we're getting wrong. I think it's that there just hasn't been very much interest. I feel like now you have something like Netflix, which you can do a search for African movies. And then what comes up is all the Nollywood film. And yeah. the structure of that film is generally the same. And so I feel like if your interest is not in that type of storytelling, 
and you think that's what all African movies are, then you're not going to be interested, which is why when The Burial of Kojo came out, I was over here crying because I'm thinking, oh, thank God, you know, <laughs> now I have something that I can also reference to say, oh, here is a incredibly genuine, innovative story that we have not seen before. So I don't know necessarily that we're doing anything wrong as much as we need to do more of what it is that we know we need to do. All of us here right now talking, I mean, everybody has their point of view and it's brilliant. So I just feel like we need to do more of it. And I think that goes kind of back to the last topic that we were discussing, which is how do you support yourself financially and what are your expectations of the industry to you financially? I think there has to be again, a level of realism where you know that if I'm going to invest my time or if I believe that God has given me this story, therefore I needed to give it to my audience, you have to do that and you have to do it well. And the more you do it over and over and over again, your story is going to find its way to the entire globe. And I feel like we have seen examples of that. So I, I think I'm hesitant to make it a negative. I don't want to see there's anything we've been doing wrong. I want to say we need to do more right. We need to continue along the path of what we've been doing correctly, which is telling our stories. So the more we do that, the better off we'll be. Okay. But, okay. Okay. How about in terms of technicalities mm -hmm. of uh, telling a film and telling a story, do you think do you think we are getting it right? I do. When I see when I see the variance in the stories that are being told, I think that it's right in the sense that it is authentic. I just feel like we all need to tell our own genuine stories. And I mean that's what we've been discussing this whole time is if everyone makes sure that they, they're true to their subject matter and you are invested in the subject matter, then it's probably going to be a good story. It's, again, wrapping it back around to even love, root, and laugh, compot. If I just take that story and then retell it, no, but who's going to care? Because it doesn't apply to my life today. I don't think it applies to anybody's life today, but the blueprint was set and the elements were set. So I don't, I don't think that there is a necessarily a wrong way to do that if you are being genuine, but that's about the talent of the screenwriter because anyone can say that they wanna tell a story or that they wanna write a movie. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be good. <laughs> if you have a level of talent and if you're telling an authentic story, if you're telling a genuine story, there is somebody who is watching it that's gonna be able to connect to it. And so if you continue to do that, you're going to gain an audience. But if your story is not authentic, or if you're trying to follow a blueprint, or as somebody said earlier, if you're writing solely for the basis of money, I, I question where is the heart? If there is anything that we have been doing wrong, it is telling outdated stories that do not have heart and that are not genuine. But I don't get the sense that anybody here speaking today is doing that. And if we are the wave of the future, then I think we'll be fine. Okay, thank you, Abba. Um, of course. Let's go to our final final question. <laughs> we've we've had a very long conversation, almost getting to three hours. Um, key suggestions to fellow writers, industry stakeholders, and the government. Uh, Selassie, can we hear you on this? Selassie. Oh, Salasi has left us. Stella. Stella. This is such an encouragement. Stella left us too. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, Joe. Um, Safo. Yeah, Safo. Because he's not doing it well. Yeah. Key suggestions yeah. to fellow writers, uh, industry stakeholders, and the government. Yeah, I think a, a, a lot of. You know, and, uh, moves can, can be started. Okay, uh, one of such is actually what we are doing. We are young film writers who are trying to tell our African story. 
And so we are deliberating on how to do about it. You know what we are doing right now is one of the suggestions or one of the moves that we can take, you know, to do the narrative across. Another thing that we do is that uh, the old phase we are now making the group definitely, you know, face of face of we the young one person right now will be the one. So therefore, we can now come together and then form a, an association or a union sort of, and then have an agenda. Because every industry has got the agenda. Hollywood have got the agenda. I mean, the Chinese have got an agenda when it comes to teaching stories to the world. So and so we come together and say, hey, this is where we are going. And so this is the kind of thing. Then we are just going to do our individual stuff like this until maybe one person will be able to do this. Joe, Joe, we can hear your telling of um, your, your film. Excuse you, excuse you, excuse me. <laughs> okay, so can I, can I go on? Yeah, please go on. <laughs> yeah, so we should have an agenda as an industry. Uh, the players, you know, the film crew association, the film producers association, all these guys can come together, the actors guild, and then uh, as an industry, we decide where do we want to go. Well, when we talk about, you know, you know Ghanaian movie industry, uh, we are going out there, what do we want to be known for? Even in Ghana, we can choose which genre. Do we want to be known that Aqua will do comedy? So Ghana, dear. If the movie is coming from Ghana to the world, it is comedy. Is it action? Is it horror? We can even sit down and deliberate on all of these things, okay? And then, you know, we, we take it from there. But this thing about uh, we should wait on government, government, for me, uh, I don't think it will work. It all depends on how we, the guys who are on the grounds, the practitioners are going to, you know, put our heads together and then when the government see that, oh, okay, so this is what these guys are trying to do to push the image of Ghana, the government will certainly come in with laws and then maybe funds and all of that, yeah. Okay. Joe, can we hear from you? Yeah, I just feel um, we as a people need to come together, um, first of all, before, before anything, like um, the whole point is we are all different people. We are all, but at the end of the day, it's the same agenda. It's to be able to get Ghana films out there, is to be able to get, first of all, it is really able to get Ghana films out there and then to get African films out there as well. And that is what I really think. And, and if there's one thing, if there's one thing I really want everyone to know, filmmaking really starts with a great script. Yeah, you have an amazing story, but without a very good script writer to have the script together. And listen, if every every filmmaker who tells you, or every director, every producer you talk to, who tells you that um, we do not have really great story, uh, we do not have really great scripts, or we do, do not have really great screenwriters in Ghana, tell that producer, I, I, I said that producer is a liar and that producer just doesn't want to pay for services. That is the truth. If you really want to pay, there are people out there who are willing to break their backs. There are people out there who are willing to research. There are people out there. Listen, when you, there are times that when you are actually giving um, producers your invoice or you are giving directors your invoice and then they see a part that has a um, cost for research, it makes them go like, ah, now we should so, so, they could try with research. Excuse me, like I didn't live in that time. I need to research. So that it, it's about time they really need to treat filmmakers as uh, they need to treat script writers. They need to treat screenwriters like they treat their favorite actors, like they treat their lead actors. Because the whole point is without a script, what is your lead actor coming to do? Can we really address this? And I really wish we had like an industry for script writers. We had like a writing room where all script, script writers will be able to come together and have a common voice, have a common goal. Because if you come to me and you tell me you are offering me five CDs and I don't take five CDs, the guy by my side will take three CDs for that offer. And there's someone who take two cities or less. So we need to have an industry. There should be a structure. What is the what is the standardized what is the standardized rate for a feature film? What is the standardized rate for a biopic? What's the standardized rate for fiction? What's the standardized rate for short films, for documentaries and everything? I feel we need to have these structures together. And once we have these structures together, we'll be able to move. Other than that, it's just someone going their way. It's just we all going this going in different directions. But then it's 
it's sometimes okay to go in different direction is common but then it is very much okay when i know the direction you are headed even though we are not headed in that same direction there should be a union there should be a board there should be a unit as screenwriters we should come together and know and, 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 and demand what and demand what is ours because the whole point is these producers these writers and di these producers and directors who go all around and say Ghanaian films are terrible because of the scripts they give out is the same person he wouldn't even pay you they won't pay you like 10 percent of what they are paying their lead actors that's if they even pay their lead actors first of all and like it, we, we need to start from somewhere you need to, if you want if you want a good script you should be able to pay for a good script if you if, if i'm going to give you i'm just going to give you you, 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 can't, you can't give what you don't have. And once I don't have the resources to be able to give you a good script, you don't expect a good script from me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So first of all, we need producers and directors need to come together and go like, okay, do we really need writers? Are writers really important in the filmmaking process? Which of course is a yes. Like you can't make films without writers. You can't make film without screenwriters. And moving on, you should treat screenwriters as such. You should three screenwriters as such. And there's one thing that I really need to know. You ask someone that, okay, mention an amazing, mention, mention. I don't want to get so emotional. It's okay. <laughs> Let's move on. It's okay. Like, I don't know. Like, if I, if I, if I talk about, like, talking about, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about what I do but, as a writer. Joe, and I know, I know, yeah. There's a screenwriter's guild, right? Is there? Yeah, I think so. Like oh, it works, like it, it is, is there, does it work? Is like, do they meet like, or is it a space where you pay dues and like you pay dues every month and then you don't even see the progress? How long has it been in okay, existence? You, you, How, you, like, you, should, you, get you, me? Should, you should have more information than me here. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you there isn't any that is really valid and, and mention a script writer or a screenwriter, you know, who belongs to this guild. Mention <laughs> just one. Yeah, okay. that's the whole point. Well, I think, I think if, 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 if there was, if there was a scriptwriter's guild, excuse what, me, if there was a scriptwriter's guild, hello, my last, my yeah. last comment. If there was a scriptwriter's guild or there was a screenwriting guild, I'm not sure if when Kwesi needed a female, a female writer who is amazing, who would be going around asking. He would have just gone into the database or whatever is present and just look through and find some script writers but i'm sure could just look around him and just pick the people he knows or the people that are super visible on his timeline or the people he knows who are doing this but he didn't really go to any script writers go to go like okay i need these five script writers for this project there is something that we need to address and i feel moving on we should give script writers the very much importance to give our actors because trust me what is your actor coming to do when the pages are blank and there's nothing for them to it's okay. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> about, I'm about, good. about her, your comments on this then? Yes. I have so many comments. <laughs> um, to keep it short, even the fact that we, the screenwriters, don't know the resources for screenwriters tells me that it's probably not visible enough. So perhaps it is there, but maybe there needs to be more work in terms of the structure of the uh, screenwriter, screenwriters guild or groups. I think resources come in the form of platforms like this, conversations like this. Um, Google is always my best friend, the internet, because there's so many resources there and you can always figure out what you need and where you need it. But I, I am so excited about, I'm looking forward to, and I'm eager to be a part of some sort of a screenwriters collective so that we can be on the same page, so that we can create an agenda to tell authentic, not just African, but specifically Ghanaian stories so that anyone watching globally can watch and see, oh, okay, we know where this is going. I think that these conversations are the perfect platform to start. And I'm excited about where this all goes. What, what are they gonna be saying in five years about where the Ghana film industry is. I'm looking forward to being a part of that conversation. Yeah. Oh, nice one, Abba. Um, Kwesi? Yeah, I think, um, so everybody has taken turns. Yeah, I think everyone has taken turns. Um, all right, let me go much. back to Facebook Thank you very and much. wrap up. Right? Oh, yeah, we have wrapped it up. We're going to read the comments later. Uh, oh, <laughs> our, okay. our, our time is up. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's fine. Guys, right, you've was, been you've been amazing. amazing. Uh, Chris, let me go, please. Yeah, you. It was amazing interacting with you guys. I've learned a lot about 
the screenwriting space. I'm not actively in the screenwriting space, even though I write. It was so amazing interacting with you guys. You have like varied perspectives, and that's very interesting because this is what we need right now. If we need to cause bring like if we need to cause that revolution we are thinking about, we need to have varied perspectives, but be able to work together to get to the destination we want to get to. And just like I always say, uh, we had a lot of movements in art, we had a lot of movements in film. And what all those movements did was to enrich the experience of art and film. So each and every filmmaker has a voice and a story is a story. You can be tell, you can, anyone can tell a story. It's the storytelling that matters. And we, our voice is what we use to tell the story and it matters. So very grateful, thank you. Most grateful for having me. All right, Naj. <laughs> Nash, thank, thank you very much for holding, for holding, for holding, us, holding me down. Mm -hmm. Thank you for holding me down. And I, I, I believe we all shared uh, great insights today. Myself, I'm quite a bit educated on a lot of things and I've come to understand the diverse perspective in, in which, um, which we have in our, in our industry and it's very good and we're looking forward to doing something great. Um, for the guilt and stuff, I think there are guilt. The effectiveness is what we, are, we all have to begin to work towards. I always say that, um, for example, if I, if I didn't join the film crew organization of Ghana, I never knew uh, there were a lot of challenges these guilds were facing and even the individuals. And I believe that it's time we all rally behind these guilds, join our respective guilds and see how best we can begin to contribute in putting the structures in those guilds together. Because if we keep sitting on the fence and outside the fence and asking questions about the guilt, then um, our inputs would not be heard and would not be implemented. I think we should all get in there and you know get our hands dirty and structure this this guilt. Sometime to come, like Abba said, five years, we will look back and smile at what we've been able to do with the, the Ghana film industry. I appreciate you guys a lot. And thank you for your uh, time. Crazy, crazy. God let me, let you, me, crazy. Um, a very important oh, one. Nice. Let's, acknowledge, let's acknowledge our audience on Facebook. They've been amazing interacting with us through from the beginning. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for the interaction, the audience. And then we hope, you know, this was worth the time. Because I think it, it was. Yes, thank you. Yes, it was. It was. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Have a pleasant evening and have a, have a great morning or afternoon. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> Charlie, enjoy your time. See you same time next Thank week. you, guys, so God much. You. Thank, Thank you. you, Asafo. Have a good Thank day. You. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. <laughs> when Thank you, you see my friend request, Bye -bye. accept. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.